Okay, Homestuck in 60 seconds or less, no problem. So, Homestuck's a webcomic about a bunch of kids who stay at home and play a video game that ends all of reality. And during the course of this game, they are supposed to become gods and create a brand new reality. But it turns out their version of the game is corrupted because the aliens, known as the trolls, who created all of humanity's reality and the game they're playing in right now, gave the universe cancer when breeding the frog that houses the universe. So, the trolls... Tell the kids to do the scratch, which resets their entire game. While doing this, the kids fly out of their universe and out of their game, join forces the trolls, go to an alpha universe, an alpha version of the game, which is being played by the ancestors of the humans, the ancestors who were created by the leader of the humans, who also created himself and all of his friends, and some weird time paradox cloning shenanigan bullshit. And then they all work together in this alpha timeline to defeat Lord English, the lord of all time, who is an alien that played the pre-alpha version of the game and became a god himself. That's it. Bye. Nah. Whoa. That was intense. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> Thanks. Perfect summary. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, no. I can't read those. Stop. I can't read those right now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right. Stop pestering me. Perfect summary. 10 out of 10. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 oh, I get back here. I'm back. That makes sense. You're welcome. Um, Very informative. Uh-huh. Hey, Ruse, I don't get to join you live much because of time issues, but your VODs get me through some otherwise rough work nights. Fuck yeah. This is a weird time to say it, but you know what? You're welcome. Thanks for the soup and all the member chips. All right, gamers. Cool. Hi. Welcome in. Today's the Homestuck stream. I'm going to be explaining vaguely, not even vaguely. I'm probably going to get pretty in-depth. I'm not going to lie to you. You're going to have all your questions answered today on this day, 413, the birthday of Homestuck. Let me hit you with another one of my favorite Homestuck songs while we're waiting. I do want to quickly say that this stream was, uh, is, um, you know, streamed and monetized through the permissions of What Pumpkin and the What Pumpkin team and uh, James Roach at the head of that. So thank you very much for the per perms there. Uh, I do not own any of this music. The Homestuck music is incredible. Please go check it out on Bandcamp. It has so, so, so many bangers that even aside from liking Homestuck, you will probably love. Let me hit you with one of my favorites. This one's called Savior of the Waking World. It feels very poignant, very, very melancholy, but adventurous at the same time. Very heroic. And here we conclude the yapping. Psych! Thanks for the soup, though, neurotic alien. No fucking way. This is finally how I get exposed to Homestuck. Oh, but it is! Oh, but it is! All right, so give me just a second. I'll get us set up with uh, how I'm going to explain this to you, yeah? Confused but entertained, 10 out of 10, no problem. Hey, if anybody ever wants to know what Homestuck is, you just, you you let me know, okay? If I get a single fucking super chat or motherfucker coming in here being like, um, but I missed the beginning. What is Homestuck? Oh, you aren't ready for what's going to do to you. Riz has been waiting for this day since his debut. Damn straight I have. <laughs> I should have made that. You know what? I should have made my mom wait until, like, today to birth me. That would have been hilarious to just wait in in the, in the fucking, in her fucking inside. I almost said a different word, and that wouldn't have been great. I almost said the government's womb. That's not good. Prepared my spicy gra- Your what? All right, Lane, fair enough. Uh, worth the wait? Fuck yeah. Okay, so anyway, hold on just a second here. Um... I see you there with a CG handle. CG. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, you guys are... <laughs> I can't explain what this is yet for those who don't know because it won't make any sense until I explain some other things. So let's keep moving, shall we? Um, what's Homestuck? Well, I'm so glad you asked what Homestuck is. Let me explain. <laughs> Take it okay. away, Pastor. Homestuck in 60 seconds or less, no problem. So, Homestuck's a webcomic about a bunch of kids who stay at home and play a video game that ends all of reality. And during the course of this game, they are supposed to become gods and create a brand new reality. But it turns out their version of the game is corrupted because the aliens, known as the trolls, who created all of humanity's reality and the game they're playing in right now, gave the universe cancer when breeding the frog that houses the universe. Yeah. So, the trolls... Tell the kids to do the scratch, which resets their entire game. While doing this, the kids fly out of their universe and out of their game, join forces the trolls, go to an alpha 
universe, an alpha version of the game, which is being played by the ancestors of the humans, the ancestors who were created by the leader of the humans, wow, who also is, created uh, himself and all of his friends in okay, some uh, weird time paradox cloning <laughs> shenanigan bullshit. He's really and then they all work together Good in this him, alpha timeline to defeat oh, Morty, man, I'm gonna need the some Lord of all this time, who was alien my, uh, that played the pre-alpha version right, of the game uh, and became a god himself. Potions. That's it. I don't think I brought any with Bye. me. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Hey, thanks for being a Rosader. Okay, so anyway, let's see. Homestuck. Homestuck. Let's talk about Homestuck. Hey there, would you like to talk about Homestuck? That'll work. We'll, we'll use this. Uh, 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 um. Boop. And boop. Oh, this one goes hard. This song is called Indigo Air, in case you're wondering. It's about a character I don't much care for, but that's okay. Hey, thank you very much, Volavolt, and thank you for the delicious soup. Th it means a lot when you guys, uh, you know what? Typically, I hate you guys, and I still hate you guys today. It does not change. I do not wish to stay up late for the stream. And Whoa, hold on. Wait a minute. I'm going to I'm gonna get you. Don't worry. I'm going to get you some info. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. It does mean a lot when you guys, uh, you know, um, give me that delicious soup to warm me up on a cold day, but it means even more when I put a ton of effort into things. Feels good. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, we're doing it. We're making it happen. Thank you for that delicious support. Um, but it is not necessary. You being here to witness this this just travesty is enough for me. That's what matters. <laughs> so, let's get right into it. Let me see if I still have my thing set up. I do. Here you go. If at any moment, by the way, the music's too loud or distracting, let me know and I'll fix it. Okay. That's not oh, Homestuck well, in 60 seconds I guess less. you guys get no one problem. more of these. <laughs> so, Homestuck's a webcomic about a bunch of kids who stay at home and play a video game that ends all of reality. Oh, we're in a kiss, Mason. No, we're not. Don't you dare use that Homestuck show. create a brand show. new reality. But not it turns right out now. their version of the not game right is corrupted now. because the you're aliens not, you're known not as the trolls say that who created today. all of humanity's reality and the game they're playing in right now gave the universe cancer when breeding the flaw of their houses the universe. So, the trolls... Tell the kids to do the scratch, which resets their Holy entire shit. game. Holy While shit. doing this, the kids Can you fly shut the out of their up, universe, bastards? out of their game. Join My forces of the trolls. God. Go to an alpha <sighs> universe, what, how an alpha one version of the game, like year? which is being played by the ancestors of the humans. Got me the ancestors who were since. created oh, by the leader yeah, of the Sean, humans, who also like created it? himself and all of his friends. Any chance for some weird time paradox cloning shenanigans and bullshit for this? And then they all work together in this alpha timeline to defeat Lord English, the Lord of all time, who is an alien that played the pre-alpha version of the game and became a god himself. Ignore him. Ignore him. That's I'm more it. important. Bye. Sorry, sometimes Pastor is just going to try and talk over me. Don't listen to him, okay? All right, so this is what I meant to show you. <laughs> my bad. My bad. So, let's talk a little bit about Homestuck. How's our audio balance? How are we feeling about the music? We good? Watch your clone pay for your mistake. Nah, it's going to be fine. My ears! My ears! Happy birthday, Homestuck. Happy birthday, Homestuck. It's okay. It's okay. Pastures is gone now. You're safe until somebody fucks with me and says, what's Homestuck? Everything's fine? Okay, everything's fine. Cool. So, let's start with our presentation. By the way, this art here, this uh, this little guy. A little, a little guy? That's uh, by Toridoki. So, check out their art on Twitter. Uh, today is the, is the day. Will be the day when I finally grasp the meaning of Homestuck 100%. Not 100% detect. There's a lot I can't explain in the short time I have with you, but I'm going to try my best. Pradoli says, how does it feel to be a Dave Cat love child? I am nothing uh, like that. How dare you even suggest such a thing? Uh, Clark says, have you explained the nuances of troll romance yet? Not yet, but I'm, I'm going to get there. Wait till we start talking about leprechaun romance. That's where things get steamy. And for anybody who doesn't understand what I just said and thinks I'm just pulling shit out of my ass, I'm not. I'm not. I could talk about that. I'm not going to talk about that. And you might be wondering, what do leprechauns have to do with Homestuck? Don't worry about it. We'll talk about it later. So, anyway, uh, how's Homestuck? Oh, Rob, robot, you lucky little bastard. I, I see what you did there. I did earlier see somebody draw a uh, beautiful redraw of a panel of Gerard and I fighting, but like I was Carcat and Gerard was Dave. But to put somebody as cool as Dave in the shoes of Gerard is such a disservice. I'm thinking more of an Aridin. <laughs> and you'll know what that means soon too. All right, so let's get into it. Ruse explains Homestuck, sort of. Hey, where's my mouse? 
Oh, there it is. Okay, so let's start with your desserts. Obviously, you got. I know what you're here for. You want hollow stuck English. You want me to talk about all of the hollow stars boys and how they would fit into Homestuck. So what I'm gonna do? Oh, Jetson says, fun fact. I only read Homestuck because John and I have the same B day. So happy birthday to us. Happy birthday. That's okay, Jetson. That's really cool. Um, so let's get started with the hollow stuck English. Uh, who do we want to start with? Um. Do you guys want to start with Altair Senpai, probably, right? No? You guys like my mouse, by the way? Yeah? Yeah? Altair Senpai? This is the best... Uh, this is the stream ever? It's definitely the stream ever. You're right about that. All right, so, starting with Altair Senpai... Just kidding, idiots. Just fucking kidding, you dolts. You goobers. You dumbasses. <laughs> you think I would skip your fucking meat and veggies and give you dessert immediately? Nah, 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 nah. Wait a second. Let's talk about Homestuck's lore. Bitches love lore. So we're going to stop and we're going to talk about a bit of world building. I'm going to explain how it works real quick, and then we'll get back to Hollow Stars again, all right? You're going to have to suck it up and wait for a second. <laughs> so, Homestuck lore. <clears throat> we'll start with the basics. What is S-Burb and S-Grub? So, Homestuck is... I already explained this, but real quickly. It's a webcomic about a bunch of kids who stay at home and play a game that ends the universe... So, those games are S-Burb and S-Grub. They often come in the forms of actual video games, but it depends on how people get a hold of them. In the Human Session, for example, they ended up buying a beta to a game called S-Burb, which, when loaded, summoned meteors from space to destroy Earth. However, while you're playing the game... Wait, is that further in the slides? I think I might have put this further in the slides. I'm going to save it for just a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that when you're playing the game, you have an opportunity to create a universe if you survive the game and de defeat the final boss, okay? Thanks for being an Axel, Sean. Will you play Hive Swap? I might be for Mets. I might, but right now I'm still working on Pester Quest. Uh, I just got through the main four kids routes. I want to do it like an endurance stream for the trolls or something. I know now, without a doubt, that I'm not awake or loose enough for this, but fuck it, we ball. Damn straight, you do, Suki. Let's do this. All right, so. The game's code is also derived from ancient ruins from space. That's true, Cooper. That is true. Win game, become god. Yes, exactly. Win game, become the god of your own universe. So, uh oh, oh, I went straight into trolls after this? You know what? That's okay. Let's talk a little bit about the trolls. So, the human kids play a game called Esperb. However, the aliens, which are known as the trolls, which is what I'm cosplaying as right now, they played a game called Esgrub. So, the humans picked up a beta access to a game called Esperb. The aliens, the trolls, actually coded their own game. The one with the little 3D glasses up there and the Gemini symbol on his chest, the yellow shirted one, he is an incredible hacker and he found ancient ruins along with the one with the red on her shirt up in the top left, the Aries. Those two work together to code the game after finding it written on Ancient Ruins, two different sites, and create their own version of Esper called Esgrub, which did doom their planet. And to little uh, 3D Glass's credit, he did try to stop it, but he was too late. Okay, anyway, shall we? Trolls, what are trolls? Let's get right into that real fast. Let's get it out of the way. These are what almost everybody thinks of when they think of Homestuck. It's what most people are confused about. It's why most people can't figure out what the fuck is going on. Trolls are just silly little guys. They have these funny candy corn horns. It's different shapes depending on the troll. Too distracting. I'm sorry, this is a great song, but it is very distracting. So, they have these funny little candy corn horns that are determined largely by their blood color and their, uh, you know space within their society they are raised by lucises which are these glowing white creatures they're basically like ice white stark almost washed out creatures uh that you would find in a cave i guess and that's probably because they're on a planet that almost never sees the sun or rather the sun is very 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 fiery and hot and will kill them if they go outside in the daylight so they only go outside when their multiple moons are up in the air okay so that's what that's what that is they're raised by animals not other trolls i'll explain why in just a second they belong on a hemo spectrum, which is a lot like a caste system, which is to say anybody at the bottom, Aries up there, is very low on the hemo spectrum. They live shorter lives. They tend to be physically weaker. But to make up for this genetically, they often have like weird genetic defects that give them special powers, right? So, for example, the one in the top left, her name is uh, Aradia, and she can speak with dead dead people. She sees ghosts. The one next to her is Tavros. 
He is able to control and speak to animals mentally, telepathically. The one next to him, the hacker man, just has full telekinesis and eye beams for some reason. He can like shoot blasts out of his laser eyes and can move things with his mind. Uh, the one up there, the gray one that you all know, probably Carcat Vantis. Um, he has no powers. He's useless. He's a pathetic, simpering fucking buffoon. Just a little wet cat. He likes to be loud and think he's in charge, but he is by far one of the weakest, if not the weakest, trolls and has an incredibly uh, unfortunate genetic mutation that gives him bright red blood like a human's, which means that if anybody ever found out, he would immediately be killed by the government because troll government's kind of fucked up and evil. So if you're if you're disabled or you have a you know any sort of mutation, they will kill you. Um... I'll explain that a little later too, okay? Okay. You got Nepeta, which is your representative for Leo, of course. Uh, Nepeta is... Nepeta's Nero Spicy. She lives in a cave and she likes to draw big shipping walls of her of her friends here. Uh, but she's also probably one of the most physically strong trolls and regularly fights like bears, elephants, and tigers with her bare hands or claw hands. Um, next to her is Kanaya, who is probably not a vampire but for some reason can go out in the sun, even though nobody else on her planet can, and seems to enjoy it. Um, also, she wields a lipstick that turns into a chainsaw. I don't know how else to explain that. She's very gay, uh, and that's pretty cool. She's she's like the only troll concerned with fashion. Most trolls don't give a fuck about fashion. Okay, anyway, next to her is Terezi. You might know Terezi, Libra. Uh, icon justice aficionado except her idea of justice is super fucked up because trolls idea of justice is super fucked up next we have Vriska, who is uh terrible worst character in the comic real piece of shit scorpio uh all of her crimes are severe and serious and there is no such thing as Vriska did nothing wrong okay we've got equius we don't talk about equius uh we've got gamzy he's a clown that's all you need to know about him i'm not going to spoil too much about the, 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 the webcom. Let me get out of the way. Okay, then you've got Aridin. He sucks. Nobody likes Aridin. And then lastly, you've got Feffery. She's cool. Um, she's technically next in line to be ruler of their entire species. And all the way down here, this side of the Hemo spectrum, these, these uh, fishy looking people, they actually live underwater, the last two. And they can live for like hundreds of thousands of billions of years. Feffery's... Um, Last ancestor, the queen of all trolls, has been alive since, like, Troll Jesus was around and has killed every single other member of her blood type. So Feffery's up to die soon, too, so that she doesn't lose her uh, position as empress of their entire species. Okay, anyway, that should tell you about how fucked up their society is. No adult troll lives on this planet because of that empress, because once there was a rebellion and she decided the way to fix that was to send them all out on space genocide conquest wars. So all of the adults are out in space conquering planets and all of the kids kind of have to raise themselves with weird giant white monster creatures raising them as if they're their parents. Okay, so now you know about the Hemo Spectrum. It is a caste-based society down here at the purple end and the pink end. Very high-blooded, very important. They are very allowed to kill people without a question. If they, like, kill somebody down here at the, like, lower end, the red end, nobody's going to bat an eye. They're just going to be like, okay, that was cool. Moving on. So, typing quirks. What are typing quirks? It's the funny little way all trolls type. It's a cultural thing. Don't worry too much about it. They're kind of like bugs. I wrote this down because trolls... Oh, how do I explain this in a way that... Uh-oh. I'll explain that on the next slide. I'll explain their life cycle. Um, trolls have quadrants. It's a specific romance system that is unique to them. Why am I talking about trolls already? I'm talking about trolls already because... Hey, cool kid. Thanks for the lore dive in Homestuck. No problem, Ritzy. I'm talking about trolls now because a lot of people are going to be confused about it. And I'm done. I'm done with people asking me troll questions. So we're just getting it out of the way. Then we'll go back to the game because I think the game is the most interesting part of the lore. Okay. Trolls have a unique romance quadrant or system that is based on fours. I'll explain that in a second. The drones and war. Like I said earlier, all of the adult trolls are off planet currently. Every time, like as soon as a troll reaches adult age, they are shipped off the planet and sent out to their space war, depending on their unique qualifications for that war. For example, if uh, the Gemini guy up there, the guy with the little 3D glasses, ever got to adult age, luckily he doesn't because he gets an s -grub, he's actually doomed for the rest of his life to be a battery. His psionic power is so strong that he can easily move ships with his mind, and his ancestor was locked on a ship, tied to it mechanically and, like, biologically. All of his veins were connected to the ship, and for hundreds and billions of years, he has been prolonged in his lifespan so that he can cre like control the entire armada of the Empress personally. So that fucking sucks. Um, if he goes to space, he's just going to be in eternal torment forever. Uh, I have no mouth and I must scream type of shit. So that sucks. 
Luckily, the High Bloods down here, they have a little bit of a higher thing to do. Like, they'll be commanders and leaders. Uh, the clown people over here, this little purple-blooded guy with the clown makeup, they're like a religious sect called the High Bloods. Um, sorry, Subjugulators. Uh, they're kind of based off ICP, but anyway, they run a religion based around the Mirthful Messiahs and are very high-blooded themselves and incredibly physically strong to, like, a ridiculous degree. I'm talking, like... 500 pound silverback gorilla rip open steel doors type strong. Um, anyway, this little guy's always high, so he's mostly harmless, unless he sobers up at some point, which is not good and an important story beat, but we'll talk about that some other time. Uh, let's talk about the drones. So the drones police the planet. They're giant machines that are like, I don't know, 10 to 20 feet tall that are made entirely of metal and look kind of like bipedal bug men. And they will vaporize you on the spot if they find out you're a mutant or in some way disabled or are not obeying the rules of the Empress who is not on planet. And they basically roam around and make sure that everything's running as it should be. Uh, they play a pivotal role in troll reproduction, but I'm not going to talk too much about that because everybody focuses too much on that. And it's gross. Um, and that's it. Once they get in the game, they accidentally created humans. I'll explain. I kind of already explained how that worked. Uh, but basically, Karkat up there, who appointed himself leader, despite being like the weakest of all the trolls, he's the loudest. So they just let him be leader so he'll shut the fuck up. Um... He's also the most empathetic and genuinely a good leader, which is interesting. So basically, what happened with Karkat was he wanted to be in charge, and he ended up having to help create the universe the trolls were supposed to live in after they won the game, but he cut corners and he gave that universe cancer because when he was breeding the frog that houses the universe inside of itself, he decided to just, like, speed run it because he's a fucking moron, and it didn't go great. It didn't go great. Sounds like Gerard. It's like Gerard... If Gerard was, like, twice as smart, four times as verbose, and twice as empathetic. Yeah. Sure. I hope you shield your body paint. I always do, baby. Uh, he's like Gerard if Gerard learned his lessons. <laughs> anyway, he missed an important step, gave the universe cancer. That's how humanity was created and how the human's universe was created and why their game failed as well. Uh, he fucked everything up on his own, which, you know, oops, uh-oh, it happens. Sometimes you're young, dumb, and you make uh, bad decisions. I, I can relate, but... I learned my lessons. <laughs> Unlike Gerard, I learned my lessons. Sir, explain the frog, please. That's it. Once you get into a game of S-Burb or S-Grub or whatever your version of the game is called, you have to get in contact with your space player, which is not something you understand yet, so it's hard to explain, but your space player is always on a planet, which is not something you understand yet, so it's hard to explain, that has to do with frogs. You find the right frog who is going to be the genetic candidate to house your universe, and then you do enough genetic modification and cloning until you create a super frog that can house the universe inside of its body and that is where the new universe is never thought the day would come where my vtubers discuss homestuck you're welcome happy 413 refrain bow okay i'll explain that in a minute what's a planet you know what a planet is but i'll explain what i mean by that in a second let's talk a little bit about the hemo spectrum real quick so again you've got rust blonde bronze gold lime olive ignore lime olive jade teal cobalt indigo purple violet and fuchsia i'm gonna go back a slide real quick so you can kind of understand what i mean by this right right so all the way down from rust all the way up to fuchsia down here cool everybody understand easy peasy Think of it like a rainbow. The only thing you really need to know here that's really super important is that the lower down you go, the more likely they are to have telepathic powers, but the shorter their lifespans. The higher up you go, the more likely they are to be incredibly physically strong and the longer their lifespans. Uh, these two live underwater. These guys tend to live close to water. They're the religious cast. They're the subjugulators who worship the mirthful messiahs. It's getting a little too loud for me. I'm turning this down. Okay. Uh, these guys tend, uh, this little blue segment here from Teal to Indigo, they tend to be higher class, but not nobles. Technically, Teal and Jade and Olive fall into a mid-class, so you would assume Indigo and Cobalt are the higher tiers, but Teal kind of floats back and forth in between. They tend to be like the lawmen of their society, lawyers, judges, sometimes police officers, but troll law is really fucked up and basically is if you're accused of being guilty by someone who's higher blooded than you then you are guilty and it, you're, it's okay for you to die and usually they'll make a big fun spectacle of it where they like execute you publicly or watch you get torn apart by monsters and laugh 
I'm kind of lost, but I appreciate you being so passionate about something you like, especially since you put so much work here, and I can definitely respect people yapping about their special interests. Fuck yeah, baby. Um, so yeah, technically these are the, the air quotes lawmen of their society, but their law is super fucked up, so it's not great. Just like real life, exactly. The Jade Bloods are special. They all live in underground caverns and tend to the brood mother, who I will explain in just a second. Don't worry about it. Just know that the Jade Bloods typically... Uh, their job in society is only to care for baby trolls, known as grubs, and to tend to the broodmother. Okay, olive bloods. They're feral, typically. They live out in the wild. They're very agile. They're not as strong as, like, the higher cast, usually, but they're much faster and physically adept. They are, like, the hunters in the hunter-gatherer society, and they never quite evolved out of that. Lime bloods. They're all dead. They are all dead. I believe the Condes killed them all. Uh, the Empress of this society killed the Lime Bloods because they had a high propensity for incredible uh, genetic mutations and superpowers. So now they're all gone, except for one, which is Carcat, who is, yes, I know he has cherry red blood, but he's in mutated Lime Blood, as far as I know, anyway. At least that's the running theory. Fuck yeah, Liv. I'm glad to hear it. Okay, and then you've got gold bloods. Almost all of them have some form of incredible psionic ability. This is where psionics tend to peak. They usually have the ability to move things to their mind. They often have eye beams. Uh, the strongest one on record is probably the psionic, who is currently the battery for the Empress's ship. Or maybe our hacker man, Solix, who can shoot eye beams that are big enough to blow up buildings pretty easily. Uh, bronze bloods, they're, they're dreamers. And thinkers and doers a lot of the time. Our main bronze blood is uh, Tavros, who is kind of a pathetic, simpering piece of shit. Um, but he's able to communicate telepathically with animals and understand them, and they can understand him. Is Nepeta the lime blood? Nope, Nepeta's olive. Lime is Karkat. Lime blood does not exist anymore. And then lastly is rust blood. They're the shortest lived. They tend to think about death a lot, and they tend to be kind of okay with death for some reason. Probably because they don't live long, and they're considered disposable by their entire society. So I guess they rationalize that by being like, oh, death's cool. Whatever. I will diss Tavros all I want, and I will explain why I'm dissing Tavros once we get over to him on Pester Quest, but we'll do that later. Mo moving on. Moving on. Carcat's a little mutant freak. That's true. Is blood color related to zodiac signs? So, no, actually. The troll um, society actually has 48 different zodiac signs. It just so happens that the 12 you see here are the ones that are associated with human world zodiac signs. And the reason for that is because these trolls play their own version of Esperb. And they were going to create their own universe in which they were gods. Hence, the zodiac signs having to do with, you know, godliness in some ways. Or the stars. However, they failed at the last second, so they never got to go into their new, new, new universe and rule as gods, but their after echoes still exist in human society and do affect humanity, which is why we have those 12 zodiac signs. On their planet, though, they have 48. Hi, Haka. Hello, Hakitos. We're already deep diving into the Homestuck lore. Here we go, baby. I hope you are ready to get in the thick of it, because I am about to dive so deep that we will never, ever come back up for air. And I do mean never. Oop, I meant never. <laughs> Ignore that floating hand. You're welcome. That's all. Uh, now, where was I? I was going to say that. Ah, perfect. Okay, so here's where we were. So the troll life cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bucket, blah, blah, blah. We're going to talk about the bucket real fast. We'll get it out of the way. Did you teach them about the bucket already? I'm going to do it right now. And we're going to be all, we're all going to be adults about it. We're all going to be normal because it's not that, it's that the equivalent of going, ha ha, bucket is the equivalent of going, ha ha, condoms. Ah, that's so funny. I shouted dick in class louder than my buddy. Isn't that funny? Wah -ha. Anyway, I'll explain. So. All trolls are born from a mother grub. There is one mother grub on the planet at any given moment. It is this strange, vaguely troll slash human faced gigantic grub. It is massive, and I do mean massive. You can see a troll standing next to one right here, right now. When they come out of the mother grub, they are these weird little grub like entities with vaguely humanoid faces for some fucking reason. And they crawl around the brooding caverns for a while and kind of like try not to die and fight to the death. This is where most trolls will die. Almost all baby trolls die in some way or another down here in the brooding caverns. They are tended to by the Jade Bloods, which is Kanaya here and this one here. Uh, but there's a lot of different Jade Bloods. They all live in the brooding caverns together and they take care of the like little grubs, but they're not supposed to baby them. If they find ones with genetic mutations or find ones that are in some way like crippled, they are to kill them and then make 
what is usually called grub sauce, which is kind of like ketchup for trolls. But basically, it's made from the blood of these little uh, of these little baby grub trolls. Uh, Sarah, thank you for the gifted chips. That's delicious. Kaisuto! That looks disgusting. Cool. It is. So anyway, often the baby trolls are just made into, like, condiments to put on other trolls' foods because troll society's fucked up and evil. Um... And typically, they get immediately, like, culled or killed if they have anything wrong with them or seem like they're too weak to survive in society. So when they survive the trials down here in the brooding caverns, which is essentially fucking hunger games for baby grub trolls, they eventually pupate, where they go into, like, a cocoon and then come out with, like, legs and arms. They are still theorized to be bug-coated in some ways in that they sleep in cocoons that are full of this goop called soper slime, which helps, like temper all of the horrible nightmares they would otherwise have because they are in close proximity to what is essentially Space Cthulhu, who lives in their ocean. So, most of them sleep in a slime that is very bright green inside of their little recoup cocoons uh, in the nighttime. Cool? Cool. Unfortunately, poor Tavros, who is the... Uh, I'll go back real quick to explain. Tavros's horns are too big and he can't fit all the way in his, so he gets really bad sleep, which is why he has the really big bags under his eyes. And Karkat up there is in constant fear that at any given moment, the drones might knock down his door and vaporize his entire home, and they realize he's a mutant-blooded freak. So he also gets no sleep. And... Our little Gemini guy there, Solix, hears the voices of the soon-to-be-dead, which, as you can imagine on Troll Planet, is a lot of voices at any given moment. So every time someone's about to die, he hears their voice shrieking in his head. Uh, so he also does not sleep well. Also, his brain is split clear in two, hence the duos theme he has going on. So he has incredible racking headaches at all times. So that's fun. I wish I slept in slime. Do it. Why don't you? Okay, moving on. So after they become, you know, little, like, kid trolls, I guess. This is like their teenage years. They start to come into their own for their blood colors. And typically, from what I understand, their eyes start to turn the hue of their blood color, which is why this adult version of uh, the mutant blood here has blood red eyes. Uh, that's not good. Because that makes it really easy to tell if you're a mutant of some sort. So, they eventually grow into adulthood. Depending on your blood type, you get very tall or very strong or very, like, intimidating. And you get different powers and you come into your maturity and you eventually join the giant space war. However, there was a time before that, back in Troll Jesus times, when adult trolls just lived on the planet like a normal species. And, uh, you know, existed within their society. They don't have a parental structure. They still don't, like have families per se and the reason for that is because like bugs they don't actually know who their parents are all trolls contribute to a genetic lottery which the little fucking hive mother brood mother thing here basically like congeals into one mass and then just births rainbows of trolls so nobody really knows who's who or whose family is what right so the reason buckets are popular and the reason people talk about buckets, thank you. I'm glad you like it, Allura. This is great world building. This is a great way to build alien or uh, fantasy species. Let's talk about buckets really quickly. The way trolls reproduce is that drones show up to your door or your spaceship or wherever you're out in space, I guess, and they collect your genetic material. I know that's gross. Uh, which you put into a fucking bucket and you hand to them. That's it. That's why people are like, ooh, buckets are funny. <laughs> because typically trolls just, you know, use a fucking bucket to deliver their materials to the space drones who give it to the queen or whatever. Which I think is much better than the alternative, which would be mating the queen. That sounds real gross. That sounds not great. Anyway, there you go. That's why buckets are so funny. Ha 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 ha. We're done talking about buckets. They're aliens. The way they reproduce is funky. There you go. Like blood? Oh, you wish it was like blood. No, it's not blood. Jeez, no, it's not blood. Anyway, we're not going to talk about that anymore because that would be the equivalent of like... Somewhere, somehow, I know there's aliens right now with humans and their fucking fanfics and they're like, <laughs> yeah, and then the humans, they get together and they <laughs> they don't even use any outside resource. They just they do it themselves. Like, ugh, okay, anyway, moving on. I don't... What are the females... Great question, Leia. You're thinking in human terms. We don't even know what their, like, biology looks like or how they contribute, and I don't want to know. I'm not going to think any further than that. For all we know, the female trolls don't actually have the same working pieces as humans. So let's just assume that they have a way to contribute and move on from it, shall we? Uh, yeah. Thank you for giving us the bucket talk. You're welcome. Stop reading my fan fiction! You're welcome. You roleplay trolls too well? Am I roleplaying a troll? You're welcome. 
I guess. I, I don't know. I don't fucking know. Leave me alone! So, moving on. Uh, what is the convention? Okay. I will address this shortly, and we're not going to address it again. Welcome to the Chum Bucket. Wait a minute. Oh, no. Fire talk. What a terrible joke. Real quickly, I will address the convention bucket drama. So, Homestuck, being the most popular piece of media of its era, and wildly like influential on all internet media going forward, and probably the premium example forevermore of telling a story through mixed media, especially on the internet, happened to be popular with a lot of kids, because a lot of kids were on the internet. And kids, as you might know, are fucking stupid. So, what would happen is kids would go to conventions dressed as Homestuck characters, especially as trolls, and aside from not sealing their makeup and getting gray paint on everything because they're dumb kids, some of them would bring actual steel buckets and spit into the buckets and be like, contribute to the bucket! <laughs> Isn't this so fucking funny? Isn't this so fucking funny? Which is the goddamn equivalent of yelling dick as loud as you can in class. Again, very stupid, very childish. And some of them would throw buckets made of steel bodily at each other's heads because there is a moment in the webcomic where Carcat, the troll leader guy, gets hit in the head with a bucket because it's ha ha funny because buckets are considered taboo in troll society to have out in public. So when he gets hit in the head with a bucket, it is the equivalent of like, I don't know, someone throwing a fucking I, used underwear at him basically so it's very gross to him he doesn't like it and that's funny or whatever it's just a regular like cleaning bucket from one of the human closets but people are like ew gross anyway kids are freaks and they took that to the maximum and started hurting each other throwing buckets at each other because kids are fucking idiots um i don't blame the webcomic for that i blame dumb fans moving on yeah, they did play spin the fit. We're not going to talk about that. Anyway, now you understand trolls, how they grow up, what their society's like. There was a time in the past when troll adults lived on the planet. However, there was a big re rebellion. This guy here in the cloak, Troll Jesus, also known as the Sufferer, ended up having a vision of what troll society could be because it turns out he's... I'll explain later what he is. But anyway, he had a prophetic vision and saw a world in which the trolls did not, like, discriminate each other based on blood type and began a cult slash sect of, like, followers who all believed in peace and unity. And he started a rebellion and eventually he was captured, tortured to death, and went down in history as not existing. All line bloods were executed. All adult trolls were kind of put on high watch. And then another rebellion happened a couple hundred years later by someone who was an adherent of his and believed in his message. Um, and then after that rebellion was put down, the adult troll empress took all adult trolls off the planet and said no more adult trolls on the planet. Mostly so that she could force them to be in genocidal wars thus making sure that she stayed in power and her empire kept expanding and they couldn't all gather up and think, oh, maybe we shouldn't be in some weird caste system. Okay, moving on. Honestly, uh, not gonna lie, glad my Homestuck Con experience was mostly positive and sweet. Almost all Homestuck Con experiences were good experiences. It's just a very loud vocal minority doing very weird things that made the fan base get a really bad reputation. And it's almost always some dumb kid who doesn't understand social boundaries or, you know, taking things with a certain level of temperance. Bunny Hunger says, I make the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe related bucket jokes, but not Homestuck ones. Also, at least the Sharpie Bass story is fake, so there's that. I don't know if that was fake, was it? I don't remember. Moving on! All right, you knew this shit was... Oh, look at all those little baby trolls. That's actually really cute. Anyway, that art's beautiful. I believe that's Zamog. Incredibly popular Homestuck artist. Uh, did uh, wonders for the fan base. J just wild uh, adoption of the lineless style as well. But moving on. You knew this was coming. Let's talk about the Homestuck... Or, sorry, the troll romance system. And then I think we're mostly done with trolls. I know I've spent a long time on trolls, but it's important to the story to make sense of it. So, Quadrants. Troll romance is based on a four-part four structure, and to represent this, they use the suits of the cards to make it as easy as possible to understand what the fuck is going on. Talking about this, let's start from top left, we'll go right, bottom left, or sorry, we'll just go clockwise. How about that? We'll do it clockwise. Here we go. There is red romance, pale, there's black romance, and auspicious. Auspicious is also pale black romance. Okay, so starting in red romance, you understand this. It's the closest to human romance you get. It's the person you want to love and be with forever. They're the person that you like see as your soulmate. They are called a mate sprit. And they, it's basically a backwards version of soulmate, like mate sprit, soulmate, mate spirit. You get it? 
Anyway, they're the person that you truly uh, view through a romantic lens. However, trolls, because their society is so fucked and for hundreds of thousands of years has been like conditioned by their god empress who's been alive forever to be like incredibly negative and hateful and have no real positive emotions so they can't band together against her again. They only view the world through the emotions of pity and hate. Those are the only two emotions they think exist, right? So... This is the highest form of pity. It's not truly pitying your partner, but in, that's how they view it. They don't understand what love is necessarily, so they view it as a raw form of pitying somebody. Um, they're the person you want to take care of and probably like do your genetic fucking bucket shit with or whatever. And all in all is the closest to regular human romance. So now we get over to Moirails. Moirails are pale red romance. Pale red romance is... Think of it like a best friend, but deeper. They're like the person that you complete in an, on an emotional level. So, like, have you ever had a friend that you can confide in so much that it almost feels like you've been, like, siblings or family for your whole life? Um, and it's more than a best friend. It's like a life partner, but a life partner that you could see, like, living with forever with no, like, romantic intention. Does that make sense? Super duper hyper platonic uh, relationship. It's typically the type of relationship where trolls, because they're such a violent species, tend to calm each other down from hyper violence and are able to, like, dull, super strong emotion. This is the romance or, like, quadrant you go into when you need somebody who's going to temper you down from doing something incredibly dumb that might get you killed. Um, or kill others, essentially. Uh, so, yeah, it's like high, super hyper platonic. Yeah, exactly. Queer platonic relationship. Let's go. Exactly. Thank you. Platonic life partner. This is like such a strong form of emotional connection. I think in human terms, it would be considered like emotionally cheating, if not physically cheating. But since trolls have this sort of polyamorous four-way relationship quadrant, it's not cheating in their society. Super normalized. Don't worry about it. I do not know. You guys are not my Moirails. I don't have Moirails. I, I do not exist on a troll romance spectrum. Okay, moving on. I'm actually going to skip this one for a second because it is directly reliant on this one. We're going to go over to Black Romance or Black Rom. This is called a uh, Kismasis or Kismasitude. Your Kismasis is somebody that you absolutely hate, but goddamn are they sexy. So you hate them, but goddamn do you want to fuck them. So, it is, like Red Rom, a mating quadrant, but it is somebody you, like, despise but respect. Sort of a super hyper rival, like, enemies to lovers type shit. Like, you don't love them, and you're never gonna love them. It is very, like, aggressive. Uh, Basically, it's like, if you hate someone, you're like, God damn it, she's so fucking awful, I hate her, but ugh, why does she look like that? That kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Or, you know, whatever. That's kind of how that works, right? If bad, why hot? So you do probably get into, like, romantic situations, but it's almost always fueled by, like, sort of that, like, spy movie. Like, uh -huh. yeah, I know you work for the enemy, but goddamn, are we both very sexy right now. And then as soon as you're done doing whatever it is you're doing, you go back to hating each other. And having a rivalry, it is technically a healthy romantic relationship for trolls because the way it works is you hate each other enough that you try to one-up each other and become better people for it. Like, you still despise each other, but you respect each other. And you try to be better than your partner in that sense okay it is a relationship that is built heavily on respect and if you do not respect your partner and you just see them as like somebody to be pitied or sopping wet it starts to blend with the red romance and that usually fails the relationship in some way and ends up very poorly it's not good um and then lastly we have auspices auspices is actually a three-way relationship between three trolls so the way this works is that usually at the bottom leaves here there are two trolls who are dancing around the idea of getting into, like, a, 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 a kismasitude, a black romance, right? A third troll steps into this relationship and stops them because they recognize it would be unhealthy. So, let's say person one, troll one, troll two, are interested in each other in sort of a hate way. But troll three sees, wait, 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 wait. That's not good. You guys don't actually hate each other. Troll 1 thinks Troll 2 is pathetic and hates them, but in a very unhealthy, like, I think you're gross and disgusting and I don't respect you in any way sort of situation. So Troll 3 steps in is like, this wouldn't be a healthy relationship and kind of does government mandated cock blocking. And that's considered a viable relationship quadrant and important. It is important to have that third troll who steps in and is like, don't do that. That's a bad idea. So there you go. You understand now? Do you get it? Do you get how this works? So this is essentially human love, besties forever, 
enemies to lovers. Hey, uh, if you guys got in this relationship, you either would hate each other genuinely so bad and don't respect each other that you would kill each other, or one party is in an incredibly unbalanced dynamic here and would take advantage of the other, right? So that's how it works. Government mandated cock blocking. All right, let me have a little sip here. I think I get it. Great. Salutes to the third wheels, baby. Happy 413. Just joined, but I thought you'd like to know everyone in our house is a car cat cancer. Oh, no. That's terrible. Third has to be a ray of sunshine, right? Well, no, actually. Sometimes the third steps in and creates, uh, you know, cock blocks passively by being like, hey, I don't think that's a, or actively by being like, I don't think that's a good idea. Or they're not right for you. Sometimes they step in and they do it like passively by kind of like playing them against each other or getting them to get along if they otherwise would hate each other. Sometimes they step in and create a third, like, sort of option for a black romance in which they're all kind of flirting with the idea of being in a black romance, but they don't quite because it's a will they won't they type of situation. It's complicated. It's a very complicated quadrant and probably the least understood. Okay. Isn't Carcat like obsessed with cock blocking? No, Carcat actually, funnily enough, despite being a loud, angry piece of shit, is incredibly emotionally mature and acts as a sort of emotional guide for all of his teammates, which might be why he's the leader, um, and is able to kind of like explain the romance system both to the humans and to other trolls in a way that makes sense because he's a really big fan of that romance structure and like the complexities of it, and he loves his rom coms. Um, so he is sometimes, yes, he does play that role at times, but more so he's confused about his own relationships because unfortunately being emotionally mature often means you're confused about yourself because you're too close to the picture. Flapjack Jackson says, where do I sign up to be a government mandated cock blocker? Uh, you're gonna have to be a troll first of all, so that's tough, but you'll feel it. You'll, 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 you'll understand when the time comes. Like true love, true, um, True auspices just happens to you. You know what I mean? You you feel it. I feel my brain lagging. You're welcome. Isn't alien romance weird? He ships it IRL. Well, I think, okay, so this is Nepeta, the little olive blood. She ships and is usually very wrong and kind of just out there doing random bullshit. Like, I ship this person with this person, that person with that person. Oh, and this would be cute. And these guys should hate each other. And these two should be more rails. And she really, really, really wants to ship herself with Carcat in a red rom, but Carcat's super not interested. Um, so no, the shipper is this one right here. Carcat is a genuinely level-headed, under all of the rage and screaming and impotence uh, guy who does understand romance and for the most part is very good at it. But when it comes to his own romance, maybe because he's a mutant, he's a little weird about it. He, he almost subscribes to a human type of romance. He, he very much wants to... Uh, Okay, so his main romantic interest is this little one right here, uh, Terezi, the, the Libra, the teal blood. And he can't decide if he hates her like here or if he loves her here or if they're best buddies or what he kind of wants her in every like quadrant like a desperate fool as he says he sees that as like being desperately hopelessly pathetic uh because that's a very troll romance or a human romance and he doesn't understand human romance because he hasn't been exposed to humans until he plays s scrub so to him he's like ah what the fuck i don't know what i'm doing i'm an idiot so there you go Moving on, let's get back to the actual lore I wanna talk about. Trolls are cool, we're done with trolls. Let's talk about the game itself because this is where I think the world building is really interesting and where you can create a really cool TTRPG and or video game. Ah, uh, don't awe me, don't you awe me. All right, we're gonna get this figured out. Yeah, troll coming of age is tough. Carcat at one point makes fun of John because John's complaining about like how hard it is growing up and how romance is tough. And Carcat says, you don't know the fucking half of it. Uh, troll, your romance is like romance for fucking idiot apes because our romance is way more complex and growing up as a troll where you can be killed for any reason and also your romance is broken into four quadrants. That's real romance <laughs> because he's an idiot. Carcat's a little judgmental prick. Moving on. Carcass Vettel. Battle? What what troll would battle be? I don't think I don't think battle really lines up to any troll. Well, battle's a fucking Jake English. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway, let's get moving, shall we? So, playing S Burb or S Grub. Let's go all the way back. All right, clear your brains, class. Class. Hey, look at me. 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 Gamzy? Nah, battle's not Gamzy. No shot. Um, look at me. 
We're done talking about trolls. Stop thinking about trolls. We're going back to the game. This is what we talked about earlier. Remember the game that ends the universe that they all play to start the webcomic? You remember what I was talking about earlier? Remember that? Can we get a PDF handout after class? No. All right, so here we go. We're going to talk about the game again. Now we're gonna get into things like classes, aspects, that kind of stuff, planets. This is where it gets really fun for world builders and people who like TTRPGs, system design, and fantasy universes. Now the aliens are cool, and that's really cool fantasy world building, and I love that. They would make a great stand-in in an RPG setting. But now we're gonna talk about the setting itself, okay? This is gonna be the fun part for me. Maybe not for you, I don't give a shit. Will this be in the test? Hmm. Will this be in the test? I... Yes. Yes, this is going to be in the test. I think this will be, in fact, in the test. Yeah, let's go ahead and assume that is going to be the case, shall we? Um, good for you. Enjoy that. Oh, two hands. Wait a minute. That's not my hand. Whose hand is it? <gasps> Whoa. I have my emergency deployable hands here. Wait a second. I can get out. Oh, fuck. Let me get a little. Um, let me get that. I want that shit. I want. Uh, uh. Oh, yeah, baby! Biblically accurate rouge in the house! Uh, sorry, my emergency deployable hands are getting a little wild there. I'll put those away. I'll put those away. Um, where were we? Right, so, uh... I can't believe this... Oh, it's an actual stream. You better fuck... You better stop believing. You're in one. Okay, so... S-Burb, S-Grub, you control reality for your friends, like The Sims. How do I do this in a way that... Okay, so I'm going to start at the beginning. I'm going to speed explain this because I've already been explaining the game for like, I don't know. Um, how long have I been streaming for already? Oh my God, have we hit an hour? We're almost at an hour and I haven't finished explaining Homestuck. Okay, we're getting very close though. We're getting very close. Here we go. <clears throat> so, in this universe, it is an accepted notion that inventory systems exist like in a video game, okay? And I'm not talking about when they play the game Esperb or Escrub. At the very beginning of the comic, John Egbert, the main character in Homestuck, activates his inventory system, which is called a Silidex, which works on different coding languages, right? So instead of just picking things up with his hands, he has to put it into his inventory and then activate it in a very convoluted way. That is not part of the game. That is part of their reality. Probably because the trolls are assholes and when they created humanity and our human reality, they created an inventory system. Anyway, moving on. If we cannot get a PDF, can we get the PowerPoint? Maybe Neroro, no promises. Moving on, let's get to the actual game. Now that you understand that, I just wanted to explain what a Silidex was and explain the arms joke that happens in Homestuck sometimes. Uh, basically, John has a pair of fake arms that he sometimes throws out of his inventory at things because it's funny and he thinks he's a funny little prankster. Okay. Komori Kujo. Thanks for being a bruiser. Now let's talk about the actual game. So these kids... Play a game called Esperb. When you first put the disc into your computer, this is in a time when you put discs into your computer and you didn't just download things on Steam, it actually connects you to the Esperb servers in something called Skyanet. Skyanet is a universal constant that exists in all realities at all times and you can only access by playing Esperb, right? Right? So what this does is it triggers meteors from outer space to come through portals and destroy your planet. So you get a timed doomsday that has always been in reality, and I do mean always, not the game. The game did not determine this. It turns out there is a precognitive sense to this game. It knows which people will play it at what time in human reality and all realities. So John, Dave, Rose, and Jade, the four human kids, were always destined to play this game. Skya was going to blow up this planet one way or the other. It is indetermined if them playing the game activated this like retro, like postemptively by creating a time loop, or that the time loop was always there and they were always destined to play the game. Right? Right. I'm lost. Don't be. So you have to stop the end of the world. Wrong, Jax. Okay, so you play the game and a countdown starts where meteors are going to hit your planet. So what you need to do is you connect to a client player. Whoever put in the disc puts in a server disc, and then a player puts in a client disc. The client is the person who's running around in their room doing normal stuff, right? So like this little guy here, this Dave guy, he is currently in his room, existing in his reality. However, his host player, his server player, is able to use this little pointer that floats around in real space, sim style, and can pick up shit in his reality and move it. I know it sounds absurd. These kids just accept it for its absurd face value and roll with it. 
you turn into a sim, essentially. In reality, a mouse appears in your room and starts moving shit and activating shit. Your new goal is to kill enough enemies. No, you don't actually get to kill enemies yet. Sorry. Your new goal is to build a bridge big enough to get to a portal that is somewhere above your house and enter the actual game. You're still on Earth at this point. You need to build a tower or a bridge that is high enough to enter a portal, but you cannot enter the portal until you use a item called an alchemizer and a uh, lath wraith, I think, which creates a totem that you have to destroy that opens your portal, right? That makes sense? Cool. Hopefully I'm keeping up. You're not in the medium yet. The medium is the game itself. You're on Earth. You're playing the game. You have to create your little totem, destroy your totem. You enter the medium. Once you enter the medium... Right? That's when you go to your planet. When you go to your planet, I will explain that in a minute. Don't worry too much about that. But once you get onto your planet, you have a new goal. You do regular RPG style quests. You meet your, uh, not your denizens, your, what are they called? Anyway, the point is you have these little, like, little NPC creatures running around that deliver quests to you. They're like little cute animals that talk to you. Like, for, for me, it would probably be the Rosaders, right? Like, I would enter the medium, and the Rosaders would be there, and they would give me my quests, and then I would go and do the consorts. They're called consorts. I would go and do my quests for them. Eventually, I would meet a big boss monster in the center of my planet called a Denizen, which is like an unstoppable god monster that I have to be high enough level to beat. And if I beat it, I get to go to Skya, where I get to participate in the Endless War. But we'll talk about that later. So once you get into the game, you have to kill monsters, get XP, level up. You get to alchemize items and clothes. This is really cool and where world building goes nutty. You can alchemize any two things in the world in a system where you basically capture an item and put it in your inventory that we talked about earlier. You remember the inventories? So once it's in your inventory, it creates a card that you can punch holes into. And then you can use an alchemizer to make a copy of that item. So I could like, let's say, let's say this coffee mug. Look at this coffee mug. Are you looking at me? Look at me. Look at me. Look at my coffee mug, right? I catalog this into my inventory. I put it in a punch hole machine. I forget what it's called. I think it's a lath wraith or something like that. And it punches holes in that card so that I can then put the card in the alchemizer and make as many copies of it as I want by spending the money I earn by killing monsters. However, what if I were to put two cards in the machine, right? Hmm? What if I were to say... What if I took, let's say, a pizza cutter, right? And I put it in a machine with um, a hand axe. What would I get? It creates a combo item. And you can do that with any items. I could put, like, my big coat in the machine with maybe a suit of armor and create, like, a steel plate coat. Or I could put it in the machine with something as ridiculous as a wall put. Like, let's say I had a poster of a fucking... Uh, a crow on my wall. I would probably create a weird feathery coat with a bunch of pictures of like shitty JPEG crows on it, right? Or if I combined like an axe and a pizza cutter, I might get like a long polearm axe of spinning axe blades. And I would call it, it would be called something in game like, I don't know, the fucking like, uh, fucking skull cutter or or the 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 pizza pounder or something stupid like that right so there's an alchemy system where anything in reality period every single thing that exists you can capture and combine with anything else it can get as ridiculous as you want i could cut off a lich monster's head like a boss monster and combine it with like i don't know a fucking uh sword and it would be like the lich lord's lobotomizer right it would be like a ancient rune sword made of bones or some shit or it could be as dumb as taking something and capturing like a, a, a jar of fireflies and combining it with a grenade and making like a uh, the firefly and it like makes a bunch of burning bugs that fly out and land on someone and ignite them not all of them are combat focused most of them are incredibly dumb the kids spend a long time making interesting fashion by combining things like i think john the main kid takes an old suit and combines it with a pile of goo to make a goo suit because he's a fucking weirdo um so yeah Alchemy is literally infinite creativity. It's a super cool concept. I wish the comic focused on it more later, but it doesn't. Um, Esper would be the funnest game ever, and if it actually existed, nobody would play anything else. Okay, moving on. As soon as you get into the game, you need to make a sprite. What is a sprite? I'm glad you asked. A sprite is a glowing ball, right, in the air that appears out of your totem that you break to get into the game. So when you break your totem... That gets you into the medium. Remember earlier we talked about making a totem to get into the game so the meteors don't kill you? Right? Right? Remember that? So when that totem breaks, 
a glowing ball called a sprite comes out of it. And you can put two different things in your sprite. You can put two items from your world into that sprite. It is essentially your helper or your guide in this new world, right? But you can only put two things in and it's important what you put in and I'll explain why. Let's look over here at column A. I know this is gonna confuse and keep up with me, keep up with me. So these little monsters are called imps. They are not always clowns. The reason, oh, hold on. Leonardo says, I love Homesuck so much. My name was Dave Strider 420 for the longest time. Now I'm just me. I'm sure you'll recognize my profile picture. Uh, so glad to see someone appreciate Homestuck for once. You aren't a fan. I do recognize that little Homestuck picture. I see you, you little wind baby. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we love breath around here. Thanks. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for the soup. Uh, holy cow, Homestuck is genuinely interesting, says Nikoya. I wish I knew all of this back then. It's amazing how well you can explain all of it. Also a bit scary. Bit impressive nonetheless. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with your sprinting. All right, let's 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 take it back a few notches. We're going to go back a few steps. We're getting into the super fun parts. Don't worry. So let's focus on these little monsters. These are called imps. These specifically, I believe, are tar imps. When you kill them, you get this type of currency, which is basically a fruit gusher. But I think these are called... Fuck, what were their... Their money's called Boon Bucks, which are like their their dollar bills. But then this is called Grist, I believe. Grist is basically what pops out of monsters when you kill them. It's usually color-coded. Uh, the colors determine the value, and then there's special unique Grist you can get from unique higher tier monsters and every time you want to alchemize items together right let's let's go back to my example let's imagine an axe and a lich's skull right if i wanted to combine those it would probably have an insanely high grist cost so i'd have to kill a ton of enemies which gives me xp to level me up and make me stronger but it also gives me that grist and the grist itself is you know the stronger the item you want to alchemize the more expensive it is so I would probably need to pay a massive, massive sum for something like that. And I would probably need a special type of grist that only comes from like undead enemies or something like that, right? Or boss monsters like liches specifically. So that's how you keep from alchemizing like, I don't know, a nuclear warhead and a rifle to make like the nuke shooter. Because that would be ridiculous. I mean, you, you can do that. And there's weapons that are stronger than that in Homestuck, but it does exist. So, now you understand the grist system. Think of it kind of like, exactly, thank you, Teeth, kind of like enchanting in Minecraft in a way, right? Now, some items are cheaper. Some items are easy. You just need a little bit of grist. Like, if I wanted to, like, combine my coat with some green hoodie to create a green hooded version of my, or, like, a green version of my ho coat with a hood, that'd probably be pretty cheap. Moving on! So you get, you kill these monsters, you get grist. Why are these monsters important? Because the monsters themselves have types, like imp, Ogre, Lich, uh, you know, uh, Salamander, that kind of stuff. But they get stronger and get new attributes based entirely on the code of the game. And the way you influence the code of the game is by putting kernels into your sprite, right? So, for example, Dave here took one of his dead crows because Dave likes doing taxidermy and put it in his sprite. So his sprite became an annoying, squawking, fucking floating orange bright shining crow that just did nothing useful and went rap, 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 at him for the rest of the game and could not provide him with any useful information because as we know crows don't speak english so the downside of this is that his sprite was useless and couldn't be his guide which is what it's supposed to do and also he gave his enemies wings like crow wing crow wings and crow beaks because they adopt what you prototype into your sprite right not good he has dead crows. Why am I not surprised? He sure fucking does. John put a Jester plushie into one of his uh, one of his Colonel sprites, which created little Jester imps. So now they have the ability to use clown powers, and clown powers are very strong, as we all know. Clowns are very, very hard to kill. John probably fucked up with that one. Uh, that's true. It was a crow with a katana stuck through it. I forgot it was the crow that Dave stuck a katana through on accident. So it was a crow with a katana stuck through it. But anyway, the point is you can put anything in the kernel sprite, but everything you put in it then gives your enemies that prowess and power. You probably want something sentient in your sprite, something that could speak English so that it can be of some use to you. This happens in a lot of really funky ways. John accidentally puts his Nana's ashes in his sprite. So now all of his sprite or all of his enemies are both jesters and also his Nana is part of his sprite. So it's like a clown version of his Nana who likes pulling pranks and doing clown sounds. Um, 
I think Dave accidentally puts a clone, a time paradox clone of himself into the sprite, so he creates this weird version of himself that is at once a construct of the game and half crow, but also has like this weird crisis of faith because he recognizes that he's still Dave and lived his own life and has his own wants, dreams, and goals in history, but he's not the real Dave anymore. Now he's like a construct of the game and he understands the game inside and out, but he's also still just like a 12-year-old boy who wants to live a normal life but can't because he's like stuck inside the game and stuck being a guide forever and also recognizes that the actual Dave who put him in there is the real Dave and that he's just a Dave from a doomed timeline and that he's doomed to die at some point or like have to figure out his own existence which really sucks anyway lucky for you I believe the second thing you put in your sprite does not matter it's just the first thing so none of John's enemies are like part grandma or anything it's just the first thing of the two you put in there so all of the enemies are now part crow and part clown none of them are part grandma or part Dave right but you can only put two things in your sprite. So you really, 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 and I cannot stress this enough, if you do not want to fail and you want that guide to help you, you need to put something that is cognizant and can speak your language into the sprite, which usually means, unfortunately, a dead relative or a version of yourself or, like, an effigy of, I don't fucking know, uh, Nick Cage. Something like that, right? Like, you need to have something that can speak your language. If you don't have dead people laying around and you don't want to have some weird reunion with a dead relative, then the answer is probably to put an effigy of something that could still speak your language. So, like, I don't know. If you have a... If you have, like... Okay, so how about this? If you had a acrylic stand of Crimson Roos, you could throw that in your sprite, and I would be talking to you and giving you game advice. I'd probably be pissed at you, but I would do that, right? Right, Okay. Do pictures count? I think so, yeah. I think you can put basically anything in there. But keep in mind, the first thing you put in there determines what powers your enemies get. So don't like, oh, I don't know. Let's imagine a scenario, totally off the top of my head, by the way, this has nothing to do with the comic. Yes, it does. Let's imagine you were raised by an unstoppable god that was the guardian of your entire universe and the green sun at the center of all realities that uh, gave them the power to control all of space and teleport anywhere and vaporize things with their like mouth and energy beams and also um, basically be an unstoppable uh, monstrosity of change. Let's imagine you were raised by something like that. You probably would not want that to get into the sprite because then every single enemy down to the weakest little imps would be able to teleport anywhere or if you shot it with a bullet teleport the bullet back into you or i don't know like blink your entire planet out of existence you probably don't want to do something like that that would be pretty dumb if you did that um so personally i think if i was doing this right just a raw example real quick i might throw like a plush bunny into my sprite so it, my enemies got little bunny ears. Maybe they would get like, you know, mad hops or something. Like they'd be able to jump really high and have pretty strong kicks and good hearing. But that's like the least of my problems. I would probably not put a plush bear in there in the off chance that they grew like big bear claws. Um, and then something that speaks South Elysian. So I'd probably put like a poster of somebody in there or like a, a I don't know, a fucking some, the, the bones of like my great, great grandpa or some shit. I don't know who my great-great-grandpa is. I don't know anything about my family, but, you know. <laughs> Something like that. I throw on my Hollow Stars new and Oh, no. Oh, no, Minty. Why would you do this to yourself? One time I made my college percussion ensemble play Suburban Jungle, and I had to explain Homestuck on stage. That's terrible. That's terrible, Lazy Egg Chickadee. I'm sorry that happened to you. Is that is that that Was that one of your canon events? Was that a trauma that you, you, you still, like, latch on to? All right, I'm spending too long on sprites. You understand sprites. You understand they affect every enemy in the game. And most importantly, they affect the very final boss in the game. The very final boss are is the, the Black King and the Black Queen. They are chess pieces uh, on an eternal chess game board that battles throughout all of Skya, which is at the center of Esperb. I'll explain that in a minute. But they wear rings that give them the forms and abilities of every one of your fucking... Wait a minute. This feels like a remix of, ah, uh, this is She's a Spider. It's a remix for Vriska. That's right, because she's pirate-themed. Anyway, we're going to skip that one in case it runs into copyright issues, just in case. Better safe than sorry. Anyway, where was I? Oh, this one's beautiful. I love this song. This one's Serenade. I think this is Nepeta's theme, or maybe her ancestor's theme. Anyway, moving on. So... The Black King and the Black Queen have the powers of everything you ever put in your kernel sprite 
at least the first things you put in your Colonel Sprite. So at minimum, they're probably going to have two cool powers. At maximum, they might have anywhere like 48, depending on how many players are in your game. Because Homestuck games are circular, right? You can have as many players as you want, as long as you connect clients to players and create a closed loop. So there's like three, let, let's imagine Armist, right? If I'm the server player for Gerard, he needs to be the server player for Goldie, who needs to be the server player for Octavio, who needs to be the server player for me, right? But if you create a not closed loop, you're fucked and somebody has to die. Like, if I am the server player for Gerard, and then he's the server player for Goldie, and then Goldie becomes my server player, I cannot be two people's server player. So I cannot save Octavio. He's out of the loop. He's dead. Oh, thank you, Spooky Tree, for clarifying. I was I'm trying to remember what the deal was with the prototypes. So, sorry, the prototypes of your... Uh, sprite that affect the game are the ones that happen before you go into the game right so if you don't enter the medium then the prototypes don't change anything or the the prototypes are going to change everything if you enter the medium and break your little like thing and don't prototype anything you're good you get in the medium you're safe okay okay rest in peace octavio is a good run Anyway, don't worry too much about that. That's confusing. I don't want you to feel like that's super important to memorize. All you need to know is that kernel sprites are basically your guides in the game, and what you put in them determines enemy typings. It doesn't always, but there are rules around it, and it can make for an incredibly tough final boss. For example, the trolls... I mean, it would be really dumb if one of them happened to essentially her her Lucis. Remember Lucis is the blank white creatures that are like their guardians and act like their parents. It would be really dumb if the highest blooded trolls Lucis was essentially space Cthulhu and had the ability to like make a sound that was so profound and eldritch and terrible that it could kill everything in every universe for billions of miles around, it would be really stupid if she put that inside of her kernel sprite and gave every enemy in the game that power. That'd be pretty dumb, right? Uh, I would say not to put Cthulhu in your kernel sprite because you don't want to fight every Cthulhu or every enemy as Cthulhu. Okay. That's true, Volavolt. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, actually, I'll talk about it now real quick. So weapons are determined by your strife specimus or your strife kind. So for example, I would be using axe kind and anything that fell under axe kind could fall into my strife specimus. You can get multiple weapon decks, believe it or not. Uh, their inventory system, and this is the way it works outside the game, by the way. This is still part of the regular inventory system. That's a regular part of their world, their universe. Um... You can get multiple decks. So, like, I might have Axe Kind, but I might have access to a second deck called Dagger Kind, right? And that's fine. You can have that. But if you do not have that, you cannot use a weapon. Like, if I tried to pick up a sword and I did not have a Sword Kind deck, it would go into my regular inventory and I could not wield it. I could fling it out of my deck, but I could not wield it until I combined it into an axe or a dagger. Does that make sense? Cool. Okay, moving on. We're done talking about kinds. Let's talk about building a portal to enter your game. So once you break open your sprite, your countdown's going, whatever, you need to uh, create a uh, tower to get to a portal to enter the medium. Once you enter the medium, finally, we can talk about one of the coolest parts of Homestuck. Here we go. Planets. Now, what do I want to say about planets? Let me think for just a second. I got I to gotta recollect myself. We went on a bit of a tangent there, and we got to start, start over softly because this is a part I really want to emphasize how cool it is. This is... So this is one of two parts of the game that are so personal to you that it's like it's like crack for people who have you ever been the type of person who's like, oh, I want to know what Game of Thrones house I'm in, or I want to know what my little hot Potter house is, or I want to know what bender I would be in Avatar the Last Airbender. This is that, but it goes stupid. This in class specs, right? So basically, this is peak game slash world building because. These planets are always unique to the player. They are in some way related to your internal conflict or turmoil or person and are a challenge for you personally to overcome so that you can grow as a person. At its core, Homestuck is a webcomic about kids learning to grow up. It's a webcomic about how it's tough to be a kid and it's tough to grow up. But at its at its core, inside the narrative, Esperb is a game about becoming who you are supposed to be. It's not necessarily about kids. It's not like kids are the only people who could play Esper. You could theoretically have adults playing it, but it's about confronting your internal turmoil and either overcoming that or dying. 
Does that make sense? So, for example, the planet you're seeing back here, which, by the way, it's as, it's design fucks and has influenced my, like, uh, palette for really cool, like, alien planets forever. I will never get over the land of wind and shade. It's John's main planet. It is a planet that is eternally covered in dark clouds. So it's shaded no matter what. There is no sun here. It is a neon, like, blue and dark blue, beautiful voidscape with oil rivers pumping out of pipes that emerge from the grounds. Super fucking cool. John, as a player of breath or a player of wind... I'll explain player types in a second. His main quest is to get rid of the clouds somehow and bring light back to this planet while also clearing up the pipe so it's not oil rivers anymore, right? The land of wind and shade is insanely beautiful and I will never get over the super dark blue, super bright teal blue uh, aesthetic ever as long as I live. If I could live in a cave that looks like this, I would. Um, now let's take a look at another example real quick so I can show you how different planets could be. This is the land of light and rain. It is where Rose is. Rose being a person who is obsessed with like gothic architecture and like the color purple and wizards and eldritch horror terrors and Cthulhu mythos type shit. She's super duper edgy. And she gets stuck on a planet called the planet of light and rain, which would seem really ill-suited to her, but that's on purpose. Just like the land of wind and shade doesn't make sense for a happy-go-lucky comedian prankster guy. But it's about confronting your internal, like, turmoil and kind of coming to terms with, I think, uh, a lot of personal hangups, right? So Rose spends a lot of her game learning to be a seer because that's her class. Her class is seer. She has to learn to see the light because she's the seer of light. Where John is the heir, like the inheritor of breath. So he has to learn to inherit the wind. Okay, moving on. Enemies are based on player sprites. I already talked about that a little bit. You have to defeat your denizen. Your denizen is the penultimate leader of the planet who usually is at the core of your planet in some way. So for John would be deep in the cavern systems of the oil pipes or whatever. For uh, Rose would probably be deep, deep down in the ocean of light and rain, etc., etc. Right? And then... Typically, you want to try to reach God tier. That is a complex process. I'll explain in a minute. Oh, hey, down here, you can see John's little goop suit. Let me... Uh, I can't get out of the way, really. Um, hold on. I'll try to get out of the way so you can see John's goop suit, because I do want you to see John's goop suit. They alchemized. Just give you an example. Oh, hold on. Goop suit. Okay, moving on. So, now what does this mean for you? Why is this one of the coolest parts of Homestuck? Because it means literally your land could be anything. This is definitely something that I think when I was a, you know, when I was a kid and I was enjoying Homestuck, it really made me think about myself and I'm like, what are my personal hangups? Like it really makes you be introspective and obviously it's hard to like genuinely judge this in a way that is not like self aggrandizing or making yourself feel like some badass. But looking at yourself and wondering what is your worst hangup or the worst part of you and what would that translate to in the sense of a planet? Like so for me, the planet I think I ended up uh, assigning to myself when designing like, oh, okay, what would my Esper obsession look like? I think I ended up going with the land of frost and hollows. So it was like a completely ice crusted planet. I don't like the cold very much. Uh, with tons and tons of gigantic, gaping, empty cavern systems and holes in it. It looks like a big punctured, icy white chunk of like Swiss cheese with tons of big old ice pillars sticking off of it, right? Uh, and this was, now, not the trauma dump because this was when I was younger. And I've gotten better-ish sometimes. Was to symbolize a lot of things about myself that I felt like were wrong with me, but I'm not going to go into the details. The point is there was a part of me that I felt was somewhat hollow or facetious or... Um, Putting on a mask, if you would. Um, and I think that that was symbolized largely by the whole hollows thing. And then I felt like there was a part of me that was incredibly dispassionate and disconnected from emotion that tried to separate himself into being like a raw, um, logical bastion that did not like allow himself to be controlled by emotion, which was Frost, right? And figuring out how to like accept those parts of myself and not be that person and grow and change would be a big part of my quest, right? My personal quest. Was I a knight? Yeah, I was a knight of doom at the time, I believe. Who said ice cheese? It was kind of like an ice cheese. Yeah, yeah. 
It's therapeutic to have a visualization of things you don't like to rate about yourself to rage against. Exactly. It's a very good medium for self-expression, but it's also kind of like picking your fucking like Game of Thrones house on steroids because it's personal to you. Almost nobody's going to have the same plan as you. It can get as ridiculous as you want. Like Gamzee, that clown troll, I think he had like the land of temp tents and mirth. So he just had like a bunch of clown tents everywhere and like a bunch of super jolly like consorts running around. Or you could have something like Solix's, uh, the, the guy, the, the hacker man with the brain problems, his was a land of brains and fire. Literally, he had giant brain goop oceans made of, like, wiggly, wrinkly brain mass set on fire. Which is wild! <laughs> Pretty crazy. Anyway, I love the planet system. I think it's super cool. I think your personal quest is really cool. I think planets having this super cool design that's very, like, it's like I like it because it's like fantastical, right? And wild, but it's still just, it creates such a cool image. Look at how pretty that is. And look, you can see these little pillars at the top. That's their houses that they stacked up as high as they could to get to their first portal. And the next portal's even higher. And throughout the course of the game, you're not just trying to get to your planet's core and beat your denizen. You actually go through portals to other players, right? So, like, when you first get in the medium and get on your planet, you'll wander around and you'll do your own questing and you'll do your own side quests and you're separated from your teammates. But... Right? If you read this as a depressed uh, teen, you choose Doom. Uh, guess what, Nunu? I got Doom on the test. You're right. <laughs> That's clinical depression. Uh, I always saw myself, uh, when I got the Night of Doom thing, I always saw myself as probably, it's probably the Martyr Complex. I'm trying to work away from that, obviously, but it could also be the negative one luck that's followed me my whole life. That's pretty aggressively uh, never going away. Anyway... As you, like, get into the game, for your first portal you go through to get into the game, that's not it. A new portal appears twice as high. So it might be, like, right here, right? For uh, Rose's planet. And you need to find a way to get to that portal. John ended up building a jetpack at one point. I think Rose built a taller building. And once you go through the second portal, you actually appear on a different player's planet. I think it's your client player, right? So if John's the server player for Rose, he would pop up on Rose's planet. Isn't that fucking sick? So then you get to work together, MMO style, to explore their planet until you go to the next players. And then you can get like a whole group together and you can all explore each other's planets together while simultaneously throughout this whole big like mind altering, like self-discovering journey, go back to your planet and do your own personal quest and you just kind of go back and forth and it's this big fun adventure. That's super cool. And you get to experience in a way walking in the psyche of your friends by exploring their planet and seeing what their hangups are. And that's super cool. Anyway, very fun concept. God, I wish that was a game. Uh, it would be so cool. Anyway, moving on. Let's talk about Sky and its moons, and then we'll talk about God tier, okay? So, the reason Homestuck has planets is because the planets themselves are set in a universe that is... Uh, Skya always exists. Skya and these moons called Prospit and Durst, they always exist. Your planets only exist once you get into the game, essentially. They have a history, they have their own lore and their own lineage, and act like they exist, but they are personal to the players. Thanks, Aaron Dill, and thanks for three months! Okay, so... Skya is where the eternal battle takes place. The, the floor of this planet is actually a giant checkers or chessboard, and the White Queen and the White King and the Black Queen and the Black King, no, it's not anything to do with anything other than chess, it's just chess, are doing eternal battle on a chessboard down here at the bottom of the planet, and it's the player's job to help one side or the other win, right? So your final boss is usually uh, the Black King and the Black Queen, because player one is usually the white chess pieces. Um, I really like this planet concept. It's like you venture across an entire world to find inner peace exactly Jax. so there are two types of players every player is assigned to either prospect or durst those are the moons right so you got prospect you got durst there are durst dreamers and prospect dreamers what does this mean well let's talk about it a little bit your dream selves are version of your versions of yourselves who have always existed within the game right you are always working on Prospect's side. You are always trying to help Prospect win. But there are people who sleep and dream on Durst's moon. And there's people who sleep and dream on Prospect's moon. So I'm going to help you I'm to help you sort this out. Again, I'm going to use Armist as an example. For example, it would be something like Octavio and I are on Durst. So our dream cells are sleeping on Durst in our little purple pajamas. And then Gerard and Goldie would probably be on Prospect sleeping in their little golden pajamas. Right? Right? Why is that important? Hey, Ovolavolt, I will not be your Tangle buddy. This is the stream of all time. Please tell me you'll cover Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff. I probably won't, Sky Limit Art. I'm sorry. Why is this important? 
because some players are actually able to be awake while like dreaming essentially so jade here you can see her flying because everybody knows that when you're dreaming you could fly and do whatever you want so jade when she goes to sleep in the real world wakes up in this world it could fly around on this golden very very bright very eye shattering plant a uh, moon called prospect she could talk to the prospectans which are the little white chess people and she can like discuss things and here she's regarded as a little princess and that's beautiful for her I'm going, Paradon. I'm going. Thank you. Anyway, so this is interesting because the the clouds on Skya show things that could be or will be. And Jade spends a lot of time before the game starts sleeping and staring up at Skya. And she can see the clouds and see things that might come to pass. She's sort of like... Uh, a fucking elf from Lord of the Rings, right? She's sort of like gazing into things that could be. So she has this weird habit of predicting things before they happen, and the other human kids are like, how do you do that? And she's like, oh, I just have a good hunch, I guess. But she knows that she's going to get into this game at some point, and that it will, you know, end the world, but that they're going to be gods, and they'll create a new world, a better world, theoretically. She's a really weird, really quirky kid. You'd have to read the webcomic to truly appreciate Jade, but most players are not awake on their, like, moons when they sleep they just go out into the furthest rings and go into their dreams right so like dave and rose are still sleeping on their moon john is still sleeping on prospect he's not awake etc etc okay okay however dream selves are still important even if you're not awake because they function as an extra life if you were to die in game your dream self wakes up and you could still play so if you die, your dream self is your get out of jail free card. However, this is where things get interesting. You don't want to waste that because dream selves are the only way to become God tier. And I'll explain how that works in a minute. Okay. So we already talked about the king and queen and how those are the final boss. Uh, you have to defeat like the Dursite king and queen. The rings are the rings that they wear that give them the powers of the things that you sprited. We talked about that earlier, right? Now let's talk a little bit about Jack Nor and the Agents of Durst. Jack Nor is a character that is an entity in every single session of this game. He's essentially a super spy slash assassin. He has three buddies that work together. They're called the Midnight Crew and they work for Durst. And usually what they try to do is sabotage the players in some way, right? Uh, don't worry too much about him. He's not that important to most sessions, but he is important to the main Homestuck webcomic session of the kids and the trolls. Okay? Okay. But if you were playing, he probably wouldn't be that big a deal. You'd probably, like, take care of him or beat him in a boss battle. Think of him like a sub-boss. Um, don't worry too much about him for now. He is very important to the webcomic, though. Okay? I guess I'll explain really shortly. Happy 4th 13th. Thanks, Sam. I'll explain shortly. Okay, let me explain really shortly. Basically, Jack manages to get a hold of the ring, even though he's not supposed to have it. And he also gets the godlike powers of the dog I talked about earlier that can, like, teleport bullets around or move planets. And he goes about destroying the entire session. It turns out he's actually the cancer that was created by Carcat Vantis when he, like, fucked up the human kid's entire universe. Um... So yeah, Jack's a problem because he becomes not Jack Nor, but Beck Nor. What chess piece is he? He's not actually, I don't know if he's determined by a specific chess piece. I guess he would probably be the bitch shit, no? He might technically be the knight because I would assume the big guy is the rook, the little guy is a pawn, Jack might be the knight, and I guess the tall guy is the bishop. Anyway, don't worry about it too much. Basically, he's spades. He's technically a playing card. Yeah, he's spade slick. Bishop. There was a dog? I missed the dog. Don't worry about it. Anyway, Jack's not that important to your version of Homest uh, of Esper. He's important to Homestuck. He's not important to the game itself. He's important to the webcomic because he is a... He is a artifact of their specific game session and influences the narrative very very uh, in a very big way because... He changes the game to a degree where it's not played normally. What I've just described up until now, Esperb, is not how the webcomic goes. The game does not go as planned, which is a bummer because I would have liked to see how the game played out. Um, don't worry about it. He's a bad guy in Homestuck. That's all you need to know. Moving on. Let's talk a little bit about classes before we talk about God tiers. Um, so, by the way, this is a, co a credit to Defeated uh, defeated Art, by the way, for this uh, GIF. I pulled it off of DeviantArt because it's the easiest GIF to represent everything. Every character, every person who ever enters Homestuck is going to be assigned a class and an aspect 
So aspects are, think of it kind of like your elemental alignment, but it goes much deeper than that. And classes are essentially like your, your, your tabletop RPG class. In the back, you see Rose Lalonde, one of the main characters. She is the seer of light, even though she's wielding dark powers right now. There are other ways besides your class spec to get a hold of powers, and I'll explain that later. Hina says, you made me revisit Homestuck, reading it with, uh, blah, 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 blah. with after many things change in my life and listen to the whole Homestuck lecture, like, this feels refreshing. Fuck yeah, it does. Also, this is the second thing besides planets that is super personal and super cool and makes me think everybody would love Homestuck and be able to self-insert really hard. This goes so fucking insane. So... Let's take a look at these for a second. There are 12 confirmed, well, technically there's 14 confirmed classes, but we don't talk about the two overarching god classes because those are too strong. Sonny says, I'm so mad I've got to miss this. I got to work or whatever. Happy 413. Bye, Sonny. Okay, so. Classes. Air is somebody who inherits things. All classes have an active or passive alignment. Heirs are passive. They passively inherit their aspect. So John, our main character, is the heir of wind. Many times in the comic, the wind just saves him. Like, a good gust of wind will come along and protect him or knock a, a weapon aside before it hits him or whoosh him out of the way of an otherwise deadly attack. The wind itself is protecting him because he is the heir of breath, right? Breath is the wind element. Uh, just one more child. Thank you for those memberships. So what does this mean besides being wind? Let's deep dive into one of the aspects. Let's take a look at breath. Breath aside from wind is also the aspect of personal freedom and personal like liberation. It has to do with the ability to separate yourself from bonds to a degree, right? So there is a true physical aspect to most aspects, right? Like, like breath has wind, time has time, life has life. As you might expect, light. Can you guess what light has? That's right, baby. It's luck. Yeah, you didn't see that coming, did you? Light is actually the manipulation of probability and luck, but it also has things to do with true light uh, and clairvoyance and understanding the true meaning of things. But anyway, just got here. No idea what you're yapping about, but happy to hear you yap your heart out. Thank you, Raven, and thank you for the three months. Don't worry. Light is the opposite of whatever I have. If I were a light aspect, I would definitely be a bard or a prince. But we'll talk about that and what that means in a minute. So what I'm saying, though, is that everything has its physical aspect, but it also has its metatextual aspect, right? So while time, for example, allows you to manipulate time and do things like that, it's also heavily associated with things like death and technology, where things like breath has to do with manipulating the wind, but it also has to do with a person's personal quest for personal liberation and personal freedom. This one, Rage, allows you to go into a Berserker Frenzy and do like a ton of damage and be super powerful physically, but it also has to do with chaos and like disrupting the status quo, right? So a player of Rage, yes, they are defined by their ability to go into a Berserker Rage, but they're also defined by their quest to shake up the status quo, which sounds like a bad thing, right? Chaos is bad, but what if they're trying to bring chaos to an otherwise bad structure or an otherwise unjust system? Maybe they're trying to bring chaos into the enemy's ranks instead of their own. So there's this sort of like weird metaphysical sense to every aspect while also having the physical sense of being able to control that element. Pretty cool. I like it a lot. The Wild Monarch says, as a sylph of doom, I tip my hat to you, fellow doom player. Class betting my beloved. I'm so happy seeing someone share about the cool stuff in Homestuck. Fuck yeah. So what I really like about this, I guess, is that it's not just, oh, you get the power to control like the wind. It's also, in some senses, you get the metatextual ability to, like, control personal liberation. Carcat, as a blood player, never realized his true blood powers. He did not have the ability to manipulate blood or use that as a weapon, but he did control heavily the metatextual sense of blood because blood in many ways, is kind of like the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. It is the idea of bonds and ties to other people, right? And Carcat, of all of the trolls, despite how loud and angry and aggressive he was, was able to act as the glue that made them work together despite everything. He was, in many ways, a cantankerous piece of shit, but he was also the glue that was needed to make sure the trolls and the humans in many ways work together. He did not realize the physical powers of blood, but he was by far the most in tune with the passive side of his powers and that he was the bond that kept everybody together. 
That's okay, Bunny Hugger 4110. There's actually a really good uh, quiz for it. I'll find it later and pin it in chat. Don't worry. So anyway, Carcat is very good at manipulating, hence his ability to like understand like relationship dynamics and troll romance and pretty quickly pick up on human ones too because he is t he is so inherently tied to the idea of relationships and bonds even though he says he hates the idea of relationships and bonds and he's a big strong lone wolf leader type anyway moving on let's take a look at something a little more abstract like doom doom has to do with prophecy stagnation um rule sets and also obviously doom so if i were a knight of doom i would probably as knights do be able to wield my aspect as a weapon so i'd be able to use things like doom blades and shit like that right just like instant entropy or instant like death type of shit however i would also be tied to the idea of constraints and rules and being unable to like change the law of things and also to doom timelines which i'll explain in a minute don't worry too much about it Teal Cat says the webcomic shaped my entire being and still has a tight grip on me until now. Should I be ashamed? No, me too. It's okay to take inspiration from the things you consumed as a kid. All media shapes you. And this one is a good way to self-review, actually, which is why I like it so much. Did you know in the Japanese fan translation of Homestuck, the Doom aspect is translated as destiny and fate, and that is largely what it ties to. Doom is so heavily tied to the idea of fate and destiny and the idea that things are predetermined, right? Doom players frequently struggle with getting out of the mindset that it is what it is or it's the way things are just have to be. It is really hard for Doom players to get out of that. Doom players are also pursued by bad luck, misfortune, things always having this sort of negative bent to them. Typically, they're associated heavily with some sort of great tragedy or death. Solix at one point uh, d kills one of his two dream selves. He gets two for reasons. Uh, to fling a meteor, and then his other dream self dies in another tragic sacrifice, and he eventually burns out his entire telekinetic repertoire so he can no longer use it, or his eye beams. Um, his ancestor burns his brain so bad that that he's permanently like disabled due to it, trying to save his session and fails, et cetera, et cetera. So doom is an aspect that seems inherently negative. The most positive side of it, I would say for a knight of doom, somebody who inherits their doom as a weapon would be to wield the idea of predestination or destiny against your enemies, right? The idea of like, you're already dead. You just don't know it yet type of shit. That would be the meta textual power of doom. If you could manipulate it to your will, you could like basically confirm someone's death before it happens and be you are the bell tolls you you confirm they die right if you were a maid of doom you might go around making sure that timelines that are bad or going poorly are going to fail right that kind of shit Hell yeah, Kurai die could could die could die god damn it why did i say Kurai die could die yeah, Doom's kind of like nihilism, but weaponized nihilism, if you realize it the right way, right? Doom players are people who understand that sometimes things are what they are, and it can't be changed, but that doesn't mean you can't work within those bounds. They're good at working within systems at their best. At their worst, Doom players just accept things for what they are and don't try to enact any change, and just, like, they're kind of stagnant in the way where they're like, uh, well, whatever, we're doomed anyway, fuck it, I guess we're gonna die, let's just give it up. Right? Now, the way your aspect interfaces with your class is very important. So let's go back to classes now that we understand a little bit more about both the physical side of things and the metatextual side of things. Let's talk about classes. Marsh, welcome to being a bruiser. So you have your 12 classes. You got Air, Witch, Seer, Knight, Thief, Maid, Prince, Page, Sylph, Rogue, Mage, and Bard. Let's talk first about the outstanding ones. Bard and Prince are the negative classes, which is to say they destroy their aspect. They react in a backwards way with their aspect, right? So a Prince or a Bard of their aspect is actually actively against it in a way. Let's say... Which one do you guys want? Let's say a life. Life is life's an easy one. So bards are a passive class. They passively destroy their aspect. Prince is an active class. They actively destroy their aspect. So if you had a bard of life, they might just cause death everywhere they go. They don't mean to. They're the type of person who Final Destination style trips, bump somebody, and tosses them into a pool full of sharks. They're the type of person who just things die around them. They have like the opposite of a green thumb. Where a prince of life, they seek to end their, their aspect. At their like most realized, they take life and they snuff it out wherever they can. This can be a good thing, like all things. They could, they could easily like 
choose to turn their aspect on their enemies and be like, I am the prince of life and I am here to destroy life and kill all of their enemies, right? But at their worst, they could easily be like, I'm killing everybody in my session and I'm creating a doom timeline, right? And again, this is true of anything. It's not just the negative classes. You could say, like, let's take a look at Maid, right? Maid's an interesting uh, class. They tend to, like, maintain their class. They clean it up in a way. Uh, a Maid of Doom, for example, in a good way would go around and, like, make sure that timelines that are bad and going poorly stay doomed. And that sucks. That sounds terrible because their their job essentially in that case is to go to other timelines where all of the copies of themselves and their best friends are and make sure it ends. Make sure everybody loses and dies. Why? So the alpha timeline can still succeed because only one timeline can be the alpha timeline. That sucks. That's traumatizing. But Doom players tend to have a lot of traumas. It sucks. A Bard of Doom would destroy Doom. A Bard of Doom would probably be the most anime shonen protagonist you can imagine because they would passively destroy the idea of destiny around them. They'd be like, no, there's no such thing as destiny. At their best, they would shake off the bonds of destiny and pre-designation and be like, there's no such thing. I know you think you're immortal, but I am no man. You know, it'd be like the fucking thing where the guy's like no man can kill me she says i am no man that's a bard of doom they don't care about prophecy they don't give a fuck but at their worst they might be somebody who destroys prophecy in a bad way right like maybe your teammate is like i don't know the heir of hope and they're supposed to inherit all hope and you because you're the bard of doom influence them eventually to give up that quest and never realize that destiny or that potential right that is the bad side of a bard of doom that makes sense? There are good and bad ways to use your class spec no matter what. By the way, class and aspect together, short way to say it, just say class spec, right? So, bards, princes, they in interface with their class in a destructive way of some sort. Now you've got things like heirs. They inherit their class in some way or another. They 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 learn to embody their class and in some way become it, right? Or their their aspect, right? So an heir of time might inherit time. They might literally become time themselves. Madoka Magica style, baby. A heir of, let's say, life may become a literal, like, the beacon of life. They might eventually become Mother Nature type of shit, right? You turn into life itself. There's a lot of ways this could be realized. There's a lot of cool narrative arcs this could take. You might become like an immortal giver of life who becomes like, I don't know, the pool of youth or something, the fountain of youth. You might become Mother Nature. You might just be an endless bastion of life that creates an immortal like sphere around you. There's a lot of ways this could happen. Ba -bum. Azura says, class pissing is something I went so hard into sincerely as an heir of time or a prince of time. I believe I was... I believe I got Knight of Doom, and I think I got Thief of Time, if I remember correctly. So a witch manipulates or creates their aspect, essentially. It's a very strong class. They're kind of your classic, like, I use this class as a, as a in a way where I can control it to its fullest physical extent, right? So witches and mages are kind of mirrors of each other in a way. We don't know a lot about mages, but we assume they work like witches. And that, let's say, the, the classic witch of space in Homestuck, right? Jade is the witch of space. At one point, when they are traveling between sessions, she has so much control over space, which is, as you know, all matter and all physical things, that she shrinks their planets, all of the kids' planets, down to, like, little spheres she can carry, pockets them, and then goes to the next area. She can teleport anywhere, any at any time, in any space. Part of that is because she's much stronger than a regular player through shenanigans, but part of that is because she's a witch of space, right? A seer is somebody who understands their aspect in its truest extent. So a seer of life might be able to get down to like the genuine like meaning of what is the meaning of life. They might be able to figure out where the well of life is or why life is what it is or how it works. They might be able to see evolution down to its like first iota in all of its entirety, right? Where a seer of doom would be able to like see prophecy for what it truly is and all of the paths that lead to that doom or to that that good, right? Cool. Moving on, knights are people who utilize their aspect as a weapon or defend their aspect in some way. So again, let's look at a Knight of Doom. A Knight of Doom utilizing their aspect would use Doom and Prophecy as a weapon, which is good, theoretically. A knight at their worst might protect Doom, but 
they could function a lot like a maid in that they might travel between timelines and ensure that their timelines stay doomed to protect the alpha timeline, which again, big traumies. I could very much imagine a Knight of Doom player having to go and kill all of their friends in alternate timelines to make sure the main timeline stays intact, right? That sucks. Okay, thieves and rogues, very related. They both steal from their aspect or steal their aspect in its entirety. Thieves steal for themselves. Rogues steal to redistribute, right? Thieves are thieves. Rogues are Robin Hood. So a thief of, I don't know, let's say a thief of uh, uh, time. A thief of time. A thief of time would take time for themselves. They might become essentially unaging or have all the time in the world because they keep collecting all the time and keeping it so that they can utilize it as a weapon. They might steal enough time that they essentially move at light speed compared to everybody else, where a rogue would steal time and deliver it to others, right? A rogue of time might steal time to prolong somebody's like dying moments until a life player can get to them and help, or they can resuscitate them or alchemize like a machine and revive them, right? A rogue of time steals time to help others, where a thief of time takes for themselves. Does that make sense? Where a rogue of life might steal life out of like, let's say, unfortunately, like, let's say steal life from a deer and then distribute that to a dying teammate. A thief of life is kind of like a vampire, essentially. If that makes sense. Cool? Cool. Maids, like I said, take care of or maintain their aspect in some way and make sure it functions as it should. Princes destroy their aspect actively. Bards destroy their aspect passively. Pages are the counterpoint to knights in a lot of ways. I think they're the passive side of knights. If knights... No, wait. Knights are the passive side. Sorry. Pages start out really, really weak. They are the weakest class, but they have the potential to be the strongest. They start out as, like, the level one, nobody, piece of shit, isekai hero. But they have the potential to become the strongest ever. But their journey is the longest and the most difficult. It takes them a very, very long time to realize who they are. Typically, pages are the furthest away from their aspect at the beginning of their journey. So, like, a page of blood, right? Blood is the aspect of bonds, connection, emotionship, emotions, and relationships, right? So a page of blood might be somebody who's a complete, like, shut off, stays away from society, super reclusive, has tons of, like, trauma associated with emotions and relationships, and they have to go through this long, long journey, learning to, like, understand what it means to truly connect with other people, but... At their greatest, it's like at their final form, they might have like the fucking shonen protagonist, I talk you down, like friendship no jutsu type shit, right? Like they might be able to just like look at somebody and be like, we're friends now. And that person might feel an insane like lover's bond to them to, to a degree where they like, I could never imagine hurting them. They also might manipulate blood in a more physical sense since we never saw a blood player truly realize themselves. It's possible blood players can truly manipulate blood as an actual thing. Hard to say. But anyway, pages are the strongest class and the weakest class simultaneously. Seer of heart. So heart's an interesting aspect that I haven't talked about a lot. Uh, I'll talk about mind and heart and how they relate to each other on the next page because every class has a opposite class. Every aspect has an opposite aspect, right? Sylphs, we again, don't really know a lot about. I think they're related to maids, I want to say. We, that's the one we know the least about. But from what I understand, they also in some way maintain their aspect in a more passive way than maids. They don't maintain it in the active way that maids go about doing it. And mages are the counterpoint to witches, I believe. Don't quote me. Uh, oh, right. Sylphs heal. They heal their aspect in some way. That's right. Right, right, right. So they repair. If ma maids maintain, sylphs repair. The chronic tired healers. Exactly. Okay, Kanaya is a sylph. Yes, Kanaya is a sylph, but she never really realizes her aspects, or her rather her class's powers. A lot of the characters in Homestuck never realize the powers of their classes. For example, let's take a look at one that could have been very strong, right? Let's take a look at the Mage of Doom. The Mage of Doom is Solok's captor. However, because he was born inherently with the ability to move things and like up to and including thousands of tons of material with his mind and shoot giant eye lasers that can rip apart buildings, he never really bothered like working on his class. He didn't bother learning mage powers or doom powers. He just relied on his eye beams and telekinesis. So we know nothing about how mages work or how doom works because he didn't need to. He didn't need to use it. He was too powerful, like, at birth, at rip. Okay, 
So, aspects. Real quick, I've already talked a lot about Doom. You know about time. Time players are usually doomed. Doom and time are, in some ways, counterparts to each other, but realistically, it's space and time that reflect each other. You have to have a time player and a space player in every session you want to succeed. Mostly because time players have a scratch system, which can reset the game if things go wrong. And space players always have a planet that at, at least once is associated with frogs, right? So you know how John has the land of wind and shade? Space players always have a planet of blank and frogs. You need frogs because space players are destined to breed the frog that will create the new reality where the game, your, your winning universe takes place, right? So you have to breed that frog. Where do I take the class spec test? You know what? Give me a second. I'll go find it. But let me finish explaining this first. So knights have a unique mechanic where knights typically help the space players breed the frog. They act as sort of a, air quotes, knight in shining armor by appearing on the space player's planet and helping them out. This doesn't always happen. Not every session has a knight, but every session that succeeds needs a time and space player. Sam says, Prince of Mind here. Actually got a mind tattoo as a reminder for the positive impact Home Suck made on my life, plus one of my early breaks in music. Fuck yeah, Sam. That's super awesome. I'll tell you a little bit more about mind and uh, heart in just a moment. So time has to do with timelines. Time players typically hop between different timelines and find versions of themselves to help them. Dave, as a knight of time, is able to travel willingly between, between different timelines and utilize his own aspect of time as a weapon. So Dave often has clones of himself from other timelines appear in his main timeline and throw strikes. So Dave might like shadow step behind you with another Dave because it appeared from another timeline and slices you in half, right? So... Now, space has to do with physical space, not time, right? So space is more like manipulating physical objects in space or teleporting yourself around, things like that, right? Egg is on fire, says it's more like a stable time loop within the same timeline. Yes, technically he's not. So Dave doesn't technically go to alternate timelines. He... He doesn't like going to Doom timelines because dead Daves are the enemy, and he realized very quickly that cre going to other timelines creates offshoot timelines if you don't loop them back into themselves, and those always end in a Doom timeline, right? So I guess I really had to quickly start explaining that in a way that makes sense. So this webcomic has a lot to do with time travel, but in a really interesting way that's really thought out instead of half-assed. So let's say Dave is a knight of time, goes to a timeline, and... Let's say he goes to the past and helps himself win a fight he otherwise otherwise would not have won. So, like, I'm in the past, and future Dave doesn't appear, and I win the fight by myself. But then I go to the future, you know, like, I wait a few hours, and then I decide, actually, I want that fight to be easier. So I go to the past, even though I, didn't, I wasn't there and didn't see myself, and I help past me fight that version of the monster. That didn't happen. That's not a stable time loop, because I would have seen myself in the past, right? So... I've now created a Doom timeline, and that Dave has to die. In some way, somehow, Final Destination style, that Dave will die, and everybody in that timeline is now doomed. So time players have an incredible responsibility to their own teammates not to create Doom timelines. It's all fun and games until the dead Daves start piling up. Exactly, Fire Duck. So, Dave spends a lot of the webcomic stressing because he has to like keep mental track or physical track of his timeline and make sure he is where he needs to be, right? So if three weeks ago, future Dave appeared and helped in a fight, Dave is going to spend the next three weeks stressing and being like, I need to appear at that time, at that place, and help me fight that monster or I create a Doom timeline. So that's how time often ties directly into Doom. This is a good song, I agree. Yeah, it's very stressful for time players. Time players have a really rough time. It, there's probably a reason I ended up landing both Doom and Time when I took the class bet quiz. That's just my luck, I guess. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, so there you go. That's how time works. That's interesting. Let's talk a little bit about the other aspects. You know that breath is both wind and freedom. Life is both life and life. It really just ties into both the metatextual concept of life as well as life itself. Light is light and luck. Time is, in some ways, death and time and technology. Heart is interesting because it has to do with soul and the self. If mind, its opposite, has to do with, like, the mental prospect of things and being able to, like, do a fucking, like, uh, Doctor Strange, I predict every timeline and see every, like, reality and eventuality by running it through it in a mental checklist. 
so heart is the opposite and then it has to do with your true self right mind in some ways has to deal with like what could be and what like is potential and possibility where heart has to do with what is what are you who are you as a person at your core what is your heart getting to the heart of the situation right ace thank you for the gift of chip so as a prince of heart for example you might destroy other aspects of yourself for example there's a prince of heart in the comic who has a ai version of himself that he coded he has a version of himself that somebody else imagines as an imaginary friend to like guide him because he he thinks to himself oh what would this guy do because he's one of my best friends and he's always smart and he has a version of himself that he, he has like a lot of versions of himself he doesn't like and as a prince of heart you theoretically have to eventually destroy all of those fractured versions of yourself to realize your true self right whereas an heir of heart you might eventually inherit your true self heart players often have fractured minds or fractured emotions and can't quite pin down who they are as a person but at their best they eventually do do that and understand who they are at their core um heart players are tied heavily to emotion where mind players are tied to thought obviously cool cool rage is both rage and also fear and also chaos while its opposite i believe is hope which is as you might imagine hope but it also has to do with like holy powers and divine things um blood is relationships and bonds i want to believe blood as a physical aspect because i think all of them do so i'm gonna assume that's actually blood um possibly water since nothing ties into water who knows it might be liquids i don't know doom is what i said it is pre predestination it's destiny it's doom it's fate it's death void is the uh the <sighs> void is the opposite of light in that it has to do with lies obfuscation illusions and the idea of nothingness if light is luck and truth and seeing what things are for what they are do void is the opposite of that it is creating shadows and falsities and never really understanding things a air of void which exists in the webcomic might be so powerful in his air of voidness that the reader that's you he might be so powerful you literally at times cannot look at him there are times in the webcomic where you cannot look at the air of void you try to go to the air of void and he is passively because he inherits void unable to be viewed because he creates a pocket of nothingness around him without meaning to pretty interesting where let's say a rogue void which exists in the webcomic can steal nothingness and create it into something right like she actively steals the idea the concept of nothingness to godlike create objects out of thin air like she might envision a like pumpkin and steal the idea of a pumpkin not existing next to her and that creates a pumpkin does that make sense wild space is what it says on the tin space mind is what i explained earlier and hope i explained earlier you feel like you understand it a little bit more now what's really fun is this is a very fluid system and it, there's no like there's no lockdown on what things can mean right like yes life has to do with life but depending on the class and how you interface with it that can really really change and it really depends on if you decide to really embody your aspect for a short time rose as the seer of light takes up evil dark like horror terror powers and uses the powers of the grim dark to enter some sort of like shadow monster like eldritch tentacle dark bad boy form and that's like super edgy and dumb or whatever but it is the opposite of the seer of light and that's pretty interesting on the other side of that you might have like let's say let's say you have a prince of doom who doesn't want to destroy doom but instead actively like seeks to embody it that is somebody who's failing at being their class spec but not everybody's going to succeed at realizing themselves just like in real life yes your class spec is a guide to lead you to be your best self and to go on your like important quest that helps you grow as a person but not everybody gets there and that's interesting i think that's really cool but just know that your aspect and your class heavily influence how you play the game what your abilities are and your trajectory as a person and how you grow and change right right cool let me go grab the class bet quiz if i can one sec what the hell foogies foogies i don't want no goddamn foogies get out of here So would a knight of blood be like blood bending? A knight of blood would be somebody who uses bonds and emotions as a weapon or protects bonds and emotions with their own life. So a knight of blood, in many ways, 
Mm -hmm. <clears throat> a Knight of Blood, in many ways, could theoretically do bloodbending, but I don't know if that's how they use their weapons or not. It might be that they're the type of people who get empowered by friendships, kind of like an anime protagonist. Like, my friends believe in me, so I'm getting stronger! But I don't know what the physical side of blood is, because we've never seen a blood power use their physical blood. Homestuck truly is the best isekai, isn't it? So there's the Homestuck quiz that I took, which I believe is this one, which I took a long time ago. Uh, I think this was the one that most people took in the past. There's a couple other Homestuck quizzes that I might link later, but let's go ahead and say, if you want to use your Homestuck quiz, just uh, do that one if you want to figure out your class bet. You can do that passively while you listen in if you want, and I will pin that real quick if my PC wants to stop lagging. Did I pin it or did I remove it? I pinned it. Okay, cool. Did I pin it? It says I pinned it. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, there it is. It was just laggy. Nice. There's an updated class spec quiz, by the way. I wonder if that one's officially endorsed by Homestuck. Hold on. There's an, there's an updated class spec quiz from 2023. I have not taken that one. I would be curious to take that one. I might do that later. Let's leave it at that for now. I, I'll tell you what. I'll make a community post later where I put in uh, the new class bet quiz uh, alongside the old one, and we'll see which one we like better. How's that sound? The extended Zodiac is official. That's true. But I don't know if that has anything to do with classes or aspects, does it? I don't remember. Have a look at it for me. Moving on. Oh, shit. Right. So I've been talking a lot about your class and your aspect, and this leads me to an important thing about God Tier. God Tier is when you fully realize your class spec by finding your quest bed, pictured here, on your home planet, and then you have to die. You have to die on your quest bed. Somebody, something, or yourself has to kill you on your quest bed. But this is important. If I remember correctly, and I should have researched this beforehand, this is why your dream self is important, because you have to be alive on your dream moon, on Prospet or Durst, still sleeping or dreaming or whatever, when you die. Otherwise, you just die. So, this is why you don't want to die early and use your dream self as a backup, because then it's very hard to get your god tier, if not impossible. But if your dream self is still alive and you die on your quest bed, you become a god. Now, gods are interesting because they, A, fully embody their aspect. When John became the heir of breath, he could turn into gusts of wind by himself. He could create huge tornadoes. With this power level, he was able to create tornadoes so strong, winds so powerful, that he blasted all of the clouds away from his planet and got rid of the shade aspect. It was no longer the land of wind and shade, right? So that's pretty wild. Cool? Cool. However, God Tier comes with one other important benefit. One, you can just fly because you're a god. Two, you get these weird pajamas. Yes, you can change out of them. You don't have to wear them, but you do wake up in them after you die. Those are your weird pajamas uh, that you are associated with when you become your God Tier. Three, you do gain... Uh, limited immortality. And I will explain that in just a second. It does not make you impossible to kill. It makes you very weird to kill. Valerie says, I've read all of Homestuck twice, once in two weeks. Yes, 8,000 plus pages. And yet I still sat here listening to uh, as I got ready for work. That's crazy. Hey, thank you for that delicious soup. <laughs> thanks for the support. Uh, that th That's really cool. I mean, um, thank you. Thank you. I'm trying my best. Let's do this. Here we go. Mm, soup. I will dump that on your head later. So, when you become a god, you gain temp uh, limited immortality, which is to say that the only way you can die, which you see here, by the way, John does die at some point. He is killed actively by Becknor in the comic, but he dies meaninglessly. You have to die with meaning to die as a god in, in Esperb, which is to say you have to die due to just causes or heroically. So if you die justly, it's because somebody's killing you for some sin you committed, right? So if I, like, let's say I, I don't know, 
kill one of our friends in the session. Let's say let's let's say Armis is in the session, right? And I kill Gerard. If Goldie kills me, that is a just death, right? I die permanently because I died justly. However, on the other side of that, let's say I throw myself in front of Gerard about to die and save him from dying, right? Or like I, I go and I blow up my planet to finish off a boss that was going to kill everybody. That is a heroic death. So if I die heroically or I die justly, then that's how you die permanently as a god. However, if I die meaninglessly, right? If I'm just like stabbed from behind while I'm having fucking tea or I like, I don't know, choke on a fucking biscuit, I get back up because you cannot die meaninglessly as a god. You have to die with purpose. So pay the price for a misdeed or die heroically. Only if you were killed because of that, right? Being evil doesn't make your death just, right? Well, it depends, because if we look at the example of Terezi using her mind powers to predict what would happen if she killed Vriska, she does predict that killing Vriska, despite being god tier, is just, and Vriska does stay dead. So, yes, it was a just death because Vriska was considered evil. The clock in... Uh, Doc Scratch's office decides if you die for just or heroic reasons. Sounds like plot armor. It is. It's it's uh it's limited plot armor. Exactly. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Let's okay, now we get to the, finally the most important part of Homestuck. We could finally talk about the last important part of Homestuck, the most important part. Let's talk a little bit about Smuppets. I don't really need to talk about Smuppets. Smuppets are... <laughs> okay, so Octavio might like Homestuck because Homestuck has to do with puppets in many cases. There's Puppets feature heavily in Homestuck. There's a lot of different puppets that have different levels of impact on the story. Sometimes they're just a quick joke. Sometimes they're a recurring theme. Sometimes they actually influence the overarching narrative and plot. One puppet in particular... This little fucking freak clown uh, is very, very important and maybe one of the most important characters, if not the most important character in Homestuck. But Smuppets are basically smut puppets that Dave's older brother used for his business of online videos that I won't talk about. They're really terrible and they gave uh, Dave a lot of traumas as a kid. Uh, there's another type of puppet called Squiddles, which are actually really innocuous and are like a children's cartoon show. But it turns out they're the echoes of the Eldritch Horrors that exist at the edge of all time and reality. Um, they are basically Eldritch abomination tentacle monstrosities that truly do exist at the edge of space and it implies heavily that kids that watch that show are actually hearing the whispers of those monstrosities but processing them as like ha 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 let's hug and be friends um and then lastly you've got a puppet called lil cal here who is the embodiment of all evil he at once houses the soul of lord english who is the lord of all time which i will explain in a moment and gamzy and a piece of i want to say day pedasprite but anyway the point is, he is a um, ancient artifact of, like, super-powered, like, bad jujus, I guess, which I don't think is super appropriate to say anymore, because I think that's kind of really, like, not cool to a specific religion, actually. So let's say bad magics. Um, he's not great. So, Lord English, real quick. When, remember when I explained Homestuck? You know what? Maybe it's time for this again. It's time to bring this back in. I'm going to explain Homestuck to you real quick. Here you go. Okay, Homestuck in 60 seconds or less. Thank you, no problems. So, Homestuck's a webcomic about a bunch of kids who stay at home and play a video game that ends all of reality. And during the course of this game, they are supposed to become gods and create a brand new reality. But it turns out their version of the game is corrupted because the aliens, known as the trolls, who created all of humanity's reality and the game they're playing in right now, gave the universe cancer when breeding the frog that houses happen. the universe. So, the trolls... Tell the kids to do the scratch, which resets their entire game. While doing minute, this, the kids faster. fly out of their universe and out of their game, join forces the trolls, go to an alpha universe, an alpha version of the game, which is being played by the ancestors of the humans, Whoa. the ancestors who were created by the leader of the humans, who also <sighs> created himself and all of his friends in some weird time paradox cloning shenanigan bullshit. And then they all work together in this alpha timeline to defeat Lord English, the lord of all time, who is an alien that played the pre-alpha version of the game and became a god himself. That's it. Bye. Okay, don't worry, guys. I'll remember to do that later. I did create a stable time loop.
Or I did that in the past, but I'll remember, you know, I remembered to play it now. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so Lord English, who I talked about there for a second, is a character who in Homestuck played the pre-alpha version of the game before even alpha version of Esper. He played it with his twin sister who inhabits the same body because they belong to an alien species called cherubs, which always have a twin existing in the same body. And when one goes to sleep, the other wakes up. Anyway, when he played the game, he became the Lord of Time. Lord and Muse are two super classes that are in charge of all the other classes and are more powerful than any class in the game, even Paige, and do not exist except in very specific circumstances, uh, specifically usually in two-player sessions. So, as the Lord of all time, he has complete control over every timeline, period. No matter what, he exists in a stable time loop and has no point of origin. He was not born, he was not created, he has always been here, is always here, and will always be here. So... This little fucker, as it turns out, houses his soul in some way, and unfortunately was uh, a part of poor Dave Strider here's youth. As a time player, he is inherently connected to Lord English and the Lord of all time, and uh, has tormented poor Dave's dreams and given him dreams of eldritch horror and like monstrosities in his entire life, aside from traumatizing him because this puppet can move around on its own and seems to have some sort of malevolent entity in its eyes. So you can see that puppets are pretty fucking important in, um, in Homestuck. So are clowns, so are a lot of things. Smuppets are not important, but I thought it'd be funny to talk about Smuppets since those are a part of Hollow Star's lore now and you'll never get away from that. That is a canonical part of Hollow Star's lore. It exists, deal with it. <laughs> I poisoned the well. His name is Lil Cal, he's a bad guy. Lord English's true name is Caliborn and his twin sister's name was Calliope. So yeah, they're not great, they're bad people. Moving on. Well, Calliope was a really good person, actually, but she, she kind of died. Anyway, yeah, there you go. Moving on. All right, that's enough lore. Let's get to the part you, you... I know what you came here for. I know why you're still here. Those of you who survived the Homestuck info dump of fucking 2024, uh, it has been two hours, and we are going to go into the part you want. This is the part where you get your delicious candy. Here we go. The Hollow Stars as... You guessed it! Smuffets! Yeah! No, I'm just kidding. Uh, hollow stars, hollow stuck English. This is my predictions for what uh, each individual person's class specs would be. And before I get into that, I have one more little lore bit for you. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. There are there are chat clients called Trollian and Pesterchum in the universe of Homestuck. Think of it kind of like Discord or Skype or whatever. Uh, this is Pesterchum up here. However, you should know that everybody has their own screen names that kind of hint at their destinies or their personalities. And they always go on GCAT because it's a joke about the coding system of GCAT. So all names start with G, C, A, or T, and the second word, and there's always a second word, also starts with G, C, A, or T. So it has to be GCAT. I don't know why. It's just the way it is. Luna says, Hi, Ruse. I read Homestead back in 2014. I didn't understand much, but I enjoyed the character's visuals. Now with your explanation, everything makes sense. Thank you. You're epic. You're welcome. One day I'll explain the actual story of Homestuck. I'm just explaining the structure of the webcomic and the universe that it exists in right now. But one day, I promise. Nerora? Holy shit. Thank you for the magenta soup. Not a magenta soup on Homestuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's going down in history, too. Thank you for the magenta supa. Um, writing stars history, but at what cost? Exactly. Sorry, it's a DNA pun. Yeah, GCAT's a DNA sequence. I said coding, didn't I? My bad. Um, The inventory system were coding jokes. Anyway, it's a DNA sequence joke because John Egbert is an ectobiologist, and John Egbert is responsible for creating the genetic biome that created himself somehow through its stable time loop and his friends and his ancestors. But we'll talk about that some other day, shall we? Sylph of mind because I'm a massive nerd. Fuck yeah, let's go. You heal minds somehow. That's therapy maximum mode. <laughs> All right, so... Hello, Stuck English. These are the screen names I assigned everybody. We'll go through them one at a time as we go. Here we go, baby! Starting with Regis Altair, the heir of hope, who is a prospect dreamer. I mean, could he have been anything else, really? He's the hollow star. Also, look at little Arturus down there. I just can't get over him. <laughs> anyway. Um, what was I saying? 
right. So, Regis Altair, Heir of Hope. Also, uh, Chum Handle is Chevalier Celestial, which, you know, the Knight of Stars. <laughs> and or the Hero of Stars. I return as a page of heart. Thanks for three months of madness. Fuck yeah. He is the heir to the hopes of all hollow stars. He is the heir to the hopes of Tempest and the heir to Elysium. Good for him, uh, you little bastard boy. At some point, at his best, Regis Altair would be somebody who inherited hope in its truest form. Hope is in many ways the power of belief, right? So if rage is the power of like shattering beliefs and shattering like preconceptions and notions and creating chaos, hope is the power of if you believe it, it can be true. So Altair is inheriting the power of believing in himself and his friends' beliefs in him. The more people believe in Altair as the heir of hope, the more powerful he would become, right? Like his power is largely tied to how hopeful his session would be. Does that make sense? Hope is an insanely powerful aspect when used correctly. In many ways, he would be both more powerful for being believed in, and he would be able to create hope and belief by just existing. He himself would be a beacon, an inheritor of hope as the heir of hope. His blood color is blue, as far as trolls go, because I decided so, and his horns... You might recognize his horns a little bit if you played a certain uh, Hollow Stars game. <laughs> I won't point any fingers, but you might recognize the reference I made. <laughs> However, at Altair's worst, he could very much become the antithesis to hope. He could become the demon lord we all fear. He could embody the opposite of hope, go into rage, chaos, and destruction, and ruin everything around him by never once inheriting the aspect he was born to have. Okay, so moving on from uh, Altair and his little windsock. Uh, this, by the way, is technically the canonical page outfit. Um, so deal with it. I know it's silly. Don't worry. Axel's allowed to switch out of his outfit later, but that's what page outfits look like. Uh, as the page of breath, Axel Sirius, also known as agitator chained, uh, would be an olive blood because they're very fast, very dexterous, ex exceptional hunters and, um, aren't necessarily high blooded, but aren't low blooded. They're the low end of mid class trolls and have a propensity for like animals and being kind of on the wild side. Axel would of course be a dirt streamer. And as somebody who is concerned with freedom and a lack of bonds and being out doing his own thing and somebody who I think very much values personal freedom. He would be somebody that would incredibly embody breath in its truest form. If he went on the journey, he needed to go on. He needs to understand how to like rely entirely on himself and nobody else around him, which I think he already does pretty well. But once he truly embodied that, I think he would basically be the like true example of personal freedom. And I mean, windy powers, but you know, Cool. There you go. It's okay. You can make your god tiers much cooler. Actually, Homestuck 2 makes an effort to do that. A lot of characters start to trim up their god tiers and add different, like, trim to their capes and armor and outfits and stuff like that. And I think that's kind of funny. I think that's a funny breakdown. There's also something in uh, early Homestuck days that was called Fancy Stuck, where somebody designed a bunch of, like, really incredibly detailed god tier outfits and... Oh my god, it went hard. Can't think of a better way to celebrate 413 than watching my least favorite idol deal out government assigned troll sonas. You better fucking believe it, baby. You guys like his you guys like his horns? I almost said ears. Haha. <laughs> ears? What what, what? what do you mean? Uh those are his horns, guys. <laughs> you guys like his horns? Nice. So, yes, Durst Streamer, Page of Breath, Olive Blood. Moving on! I did. I did say Homestuck 2, yeah. I've been reading some Homestuck 2, believe it or not. I won't talk too much about it, but I'll talk about it later. Well, I probably won't talk about it on this stream. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You, it it's, Homestuck is a self-condensed story, and it's longer than the fucking Bible. It's fine on its own. Uh, but Homestuck 2 is... It's interesting. I've been enjoying parts of it. Moving on, we have Gavis Bettle, also known as Gibbering Comedian. He is a purple blood, because, I mean... They're the... The, the religious clown guys uh, who worship the weird ICP mirthful messiahs. 
Duh. Uh, he is a purple blood. He is the bard of space and is a Durst streamer. He passively destroys space by being anywhere near it. That might mean that he slowly erodes reality by existing. It might mean that he slowly, passively, like, erodes the concept of personal space. It's hard to say, really, because bards destroy passively the things that they are around. It might mean, unfortunately, that he at some point, like, falls ass backwards onto the, like, destiny frog that's supposed to house the next fucking universe and ruins the entire session so the time player has to reset it with the scratch. Who knows? He is, after all, the bard of space, and that makes him the ultimate boy f No, <laughs> Shy Panda says, I was shopping while listening to this and I'm home now. It's great to hear about Homestuck after all these years. And even better that someone finally explains the setting in the world uh, in a way I get. Fuck yeah, baby. You guys like his horns? <laughs> Battle 2, save us! Technically, Battle 2 would die. <gasps> guys. Guys. <laughs> Battle 2 would die on entering the medium. And then Battle would Colonel Sprite. <laughs> <laughs> He'd probably do a goose and then battle two. It'd be like a, a weird goose battle two hybrid floating around being his sprite, giving him like advice. <laughs> <laughs> Also, clearly, his Lucis. Remember those little ice white creatures I was talking about? His Lucis is clearly Phantom. I mean, it's right there on the tin. Let's be real with each other. His Lucis is a freak who whispers eldritch horrors in his ears, and that's probably why Battle's a little fucked up. It's probably why he's a gibbering fucking comedian when he enters the medium. He's probably got some sort of, like, eldritch traumies from the things Phantom has been talking to him about before he entered the game. I got Page of Light too real for life with the audience. <laughs> congrats. Congrats. Anyway, there you go. Okay, next we've got Machina X Fleon, whose chum handle is Guile Artifice. He's a gold blood, so that means he probably has telekinetic or at least some sort of like uh, mind powers associated passively within him. I don't know if he would have red and blue eyes, but I didn't want to pick his colors for him because I'm lazy. And also, he already has a red theme going on. But typically, you know, they have funky little eyeballs for, to represent their psionics. They almost always have two sets of horns. He would be the Sylph of Time, somebody who heals time and maybe fixes the fuck up of sitting on a frog. Who knows? Uh, I made my username over a decade ago as a chum handle, and I tell that to my non homestuck friends to ruin it for them. Fuck yeah, Vivid Zephyr. We love to hear it. Anyway, as the Sylph of Time and a Durst streamer, he would be the type of person who repairs timelines when they get super fucked up. So basically, in his session, likely the Alpha timeline would keep getting fucked and he would keep having to find ways to fix it so it doesn't absolutely go to shit. Also, time players, typically very associated with technology in some way or another. Hence the archers. And typically have something to do with death. Like, they are heavily tied to death, or at least related to death, in one way or another. Like, Aradia, the maid of time, was dead in a ghost before she entered her session. Dave does a lot to do with, like, death by all the dying crows around him. His interest in taxidermy, all the dead Daves. Time players deal with death a lot. And I think Fleon's, um... Condition that he deals with, with the, uh totally normal weird black goop that sometimes plagues him uh has something to do with death moving on we have bonzoin haka thaumaturge tumult uh he's rust blood the lowest uh, tier blood technically but they typically come with special powers often also associated with you guessed it, death. The rust bloods we know could hear, see, and speak to the dead, and that would make a really damn good exorcist, wouldn't it? So, as the seer of blood, Haka is able to see truly down to the core the connections around people and among people, and understand them at their like most primal, and possibly even guide and manipulate them. He'd be the type of person you wanted to turn to if something was going wrong in a relationship or a friendship. He'd be the type of person who would probably give you good advice regarding that. So, pretty cool. He might even be able to see what relationships, connections, and things need to happen to be able to see, like, ultimate victory to its fullest. Because Seers typically are really good guide-type characters. The ultimate bro. <laughs> Okay, we've got Josuiji Shinri! Cyprinus Abhorrent. Uh, he's a jade blood, which means he'd be the type of person who on the planet was taking care of, like, little uh, grubs and stuff like that, and the mother grub, but also means that he is, like, a special interesting side cast of uh, people and would probably have a lot of wanderlust, because typically they're locked in the caverns their whole lives and don't get to leave. So he'd be the type of person who probably wanted to get out and explore as soon as he got the chance, you know, if he happened to enter a world-altering game that creates planets around people that are determined entirely by their own personalities. I'm a Sylph of Heart. My friend is a rogue of light. Please, almighty ruse. 
Are we making it out of here? If you get a time and space player? Probably a rogue of light would be really good at stealing luck and distributing it amongst their friends. So that's not bad. And a Sylph of Art is great at repairing soul and fractured selves. A Sylph of Art would also make an incredibly good therapist. Anyway, as a rogue of mind, Shinri would be the ultimate advice friend, which is to say he's able to steal mind from others and distribute it to his friends. So in the most literal sense, this might mean that he's able to like make an enemy very stupid for a while and increase the intelligence score of allies or make them see like things for what they are, plans around them. However, in the metatextual sense, he would be able to steal mind from others in a certain way that allows him to hopefully distribute mind to other people, which is to say he would give incredibly good advice, both strategically, mechanically, tactically, that kind of stuff. He would be insanely good at, like, helping guide others through plans and things of that nature. Fire Duck says, I ended up as a page of space, and of course Shinri would be a jade blood. It just makes too much sense. <laughs> yeah. He would also be very, very prone to, you got it, Karen, Karen, Karen Thanios, giving people a piece of his mind, if you would. Does that mean he'd make battle smart? Maybe for a minute or two. Mage of life. Not bad. Okay, we're on to Gerard T. Rexford. Chum handle, Cretaceous Tyrant. Blood, Violet, which is the highest tier of blood, besides technically being the Empress tier, but uh, I believe Empresses are always born female, I want to say. And anyway, there's only one of them at any given time, and the other one gets cold. So he would be a pretend, uh, a pretender to the throne, if you would, which uh, <laughs> suits him just fine. He would also be a sea dweller, interestingly, which means he exists. He lives underwater and breathes water, but can also breathe on air. And he would, in fact, be the prince of light, which is the destroyer of light, the destroyer of truth, the destroyer of logic, and the destroyer of luck. That is wet cat energy. If I have ever fucking seen it, baby, as the prince of light, he would be some somebody who actively destroys the concept of good luck and things going right and actively destroys the concept of seeing the truth of things by being very, very loud, probably. So at his best, he would turn those powers against his enemies at his worst. And knowing Gerard, he would probably accidentally use that on his teammates a lot. <laughs> that being said, as the Prince of Light, he would also truthfully, has some interesting powers associated with light. He might be able to wield light as a weapon to destroy things. Possibly. Nice. Nice. No, I... No, hey. Whoa, I'm the one with the negative riz. Back up. Back up. That's my thing. Okay, we've got Gold Bullet. Chum Handle. Gilded Arsenal. He's a bronze blood. You like his little coat? Oh, wait, I forgot to show off some of the horns of some of these. Wait a minute. Let's take a look at some of these horns. Wait a minute. Okay, so we talked about Fleance. Those definitely aren't cat ears, I promise. Bird wings? Ah, 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 ah. That's a little silly, but I like it. Uh, we, I mean, it's kind of like an arrow already, so I can, <laughs> you know. Uh, and then we've got, you know, his little, his little crown twice, essentially. Now, we've got Gold Bullet. So, Gilded Arsenal, baby. He's a bronze blood, and he is the Maid of Heart. Somebody who tends to and repairs both the soul and the self. Somebody who tries to keep people on track and not fracturing who they are. That would be somebody who tries to keep people from acting out uh, of character and somebody uh, keep people from doing things they're not akin to. So, for example, let's say that, like, um... I don't know, let's say Haka wasn't happy with uh, being the seer of blood. He's like, no, I don't care about friendships or personalities or things like that. I want cool powers. I'm going to be a badass blood user. I'm just going to I'm gonna cut people open, and that's going to be my thing. I'll show them. I'm just going to be tough. Now, a maid of heart might be somebody who's like, no, you're destined to be the seer of blood, and that's okay. And you can you can find, like, joy and, and power and progress through that and not feel pathetic. Like, you could still be a badass and be the seer of blood, right? So... As the maid of blood, he kind of like makes sure people are on the track they're supposed to be on and doesn't don't fracture themselves as people, right? Right. Moving on. Oh, and he's a dirt streamer. We got Octavio, the tailored conductor, is his chum handle. He's a cerulean blood, which is about as high as you get before you start getting into the purples. They are known for manipulation and pulling strings and being associated with webs in some way, which works just fine. Uh, he is the Mage of Void from the Moon of Prospect. The Mage of Void would be somebody who creates and or manipulates void or nothingness, which works just fucking fine, baby. You know this motherfucker would be out here manipulating darkness and void to be a, a strange 
range sort of like nothing. He would be out here like creating Hold on. Galen says, I retook the class bet quiz and got Page of Heart when I used to be Thief of Mind. Ooh, congratulations on your character growth. Neat. Happy 413. Listen, Page of Heart goes hard. Page is, again, the strongest class that isn't Lord or Muse. So, here's a funny one that I think is interesting. I really like the way class specs interface with a person's personal story rather than the way the class spec interfaces with the game, right? So, yes, Void has to do with obfuscation and shadows and illusion and nothingness. And, yes, mages have to do with creation in the most literal sense that they create their aspect. But, consider this. Is the act of creating a puppet with nothing inside of it, no soul, no personality, is that not actively being a mage of Void? Even before he got in the game, he was playing out his class bet. He just didn't realize it. He's creating nothing. He's creating an, an, an entity with no soul, no personality, no action other than what the actions you push onto it are. He creates Void. Uh huh? Gerard actively destroys Luck already. He's playing at being the Prince of Light without being the Prince of Light. Isn't that fun? Isn't that interesting? Well, I guess Gerard doesn't destroy luck. Maybe that's my thing. Who knows? But Gerard definitely destroys at least truth and logic, right? Like, his shouting definitely plays that role. Sailor, your mom, thanks for the delicious soup. Just learned I'm a Sylph of Light. I feel like someone with Gerard's class spec would be a lot of work. I'm all for it. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. Good luck with that. Good luck repairing that light. Uh, Sean Rhodes says, I got Muse of Space, but was told it was a huge spoiler for where I'm at, so I pretend I do not see it. Probably pretend you don't see it. Also, if Muse is on that list, that's really weird. Uh, Muse probably should not be on the, on the class spec list, but who knows? Anyway, the point is, I really like when characters' class specs influence them even before they get in the game because they were always destined to be that in some way, right? Like, John was always yearning for freedom. He always wanted to inherit breath and that he always wanted to inherit being out of home. He did not want to be home stuck, right? Hence the name. Carcat was always destined to be the Knight of Blood because he was always the one fighting to keep his friends in contact and connected in some way by thinking he was being some badass leader of his people. He was truly just getting people to work together because they didn't want to deal with how annoying he was, which is what they needed at the time they needed it. And he eventually grew to accept that he was just good with people. He eventually grew into being the Knight of Blood in its truest form. Right? Right? Yeah? You get it? So not only does your class aspect affect your elemental abilities, your metaphysical effect on the narrative, it also affects the trajectory of your life forever because you were always that. One way that's really important to this is that the Seer of Blood, the original Seer of Blood was Karkat's ancestor, the Sufferer, who we talked about a long time ago in this stream. The one who was tortured to death because he saw visions of a better universe where trolls were together. Do you know why he did that? Do you know how he did that? Reverie says, I got page of mine and that tracks. I feel very head, em <laughs> very head empty. Hell yeah, baby. No problem. Please get excited about Homestuck again. Draw fan art of Homestuck again. I want to see it so bad. Maybe we'll do like a fan art review at some point or something. Who knows? I'd probably have to get permission, but I want to. Anyway, the reason he did that, the reason the sufferer was able to do that, even though he existed in essentially biblical troll times, is because despite never playing Esper, his... And his, his young version in another reality did play Esperb, and he was the seer of blood. That means that even from across multiverses in another dimension, Troll Jesus, who is the alternate reality version of that ancestor, was able to see the connection that could exist in trolls because a version of him was the seer of blood. That means that even if you never played Esperb, if another version of you exists in reality where Esper doesn't exist, you are still being influenced by these powers. Like Octavio in Elysium, despite never playing Homestuck, is still creating Void. He's still making nothing, right? He's still doing it. Isn't that wild? Isn't that so fucking cool? Anyway, your brain's cooking. So, last but not least, we have me. I don't think that's a surprise. I kind of spoiled it early, but as the cantankerous garrulity. I'm a teal blood known as the Knight of Doom, a dirt streamer because <sighs> reasons. Uh, and <laughs> if you're depressed, you're probably from Durs. Uh, Cancri from before us. Yes, Cancri from before us is the sufferer from um, Alternia's prehistory. Let's go, self avoid. Good taste, mammon. Repairing nothing is not bad at all. That's very cool, actually. Um, so I had a couple debates here. I considered that I might be a yellow blood, but 
I'm too attached to being a Libra. I consider that I might be a yellow blood, but I don't really... I feel like telekinetic powers are sort of like a birthright and a blessing, and I just don't have any of that. <laughs> All I could do is plan around everything and try my best to formulate enough plots to not suffer my negative one luck, and I feel like that's very teal adjacent. I also have a really bad martyr complex and a sense of justice, which is teal adjacent. And as the Knight of Doom, I am plagued forever by death, not death, sorry, Bad luck hounding me, hovering over my shoulder, creating the worst possibilities that could ever exist. And at my worst, which is where I'm at all the time, I am led by that bad luck and I let it guide me. At my best, I own it, I weaponize it, and I manage to sidestep it or like preserve it and roll with those punches. I'm trying my best to do it, and hopefully one day I'll be there. I have mostly gotten past the depression side of being a Knight of Doom and the preserving Doom si timeline. So, I mean, maybe if I retook the test, I'd be something else. I think the most recent time I took it, I was either the heir or the thief of time. So unfortunately, I think that means the depression remains, but <laughs> at least it's not Doom, <laughs> maybe. Like Crow Bronwyn. I don't know who that is. Maybe? No. Oh. I'm trying my best here. I'm trying my best here. So yeah, that uh that's Homestuck, baby. That's Hollow Stars Ian as Homestuck characters. How'd you like it? How are we feeling? What do you think? How do we feel about how this went? Hmm? Oh, from Ruby. I forgot that's what that character's fucking name was. Yeah, yeah, like Crow Bronwyn. Exactly. Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, why not? Let's say that. I very much like Homestuck. I'm a huge fan of, uh, I mean, obviously my favorite characters are Dave Strider, Carcat, Terezi. <laughs> you know those characters. The usual ones. I can't help it. They're very well written. I love trolls. Justin Timberlake was great. Uh, as br Yeah, Justin Timberlake. Uh, troll Justin Timberlake was really cool. Um, troll Will Smith was something too. Haven't thought of Homestuck in years, says Isla Florette. Uh, love uh, to see this stream in my YouTube feed. Retook the class bit quiz and got views of life. Fuck yeah, let's go, baby. We love Homestuck. We love thinking about it. We love talking about it. Valid and fucking base. This is actually so interesting and fun. I expected a meme stream, uh, but stayed for peak. Fuck yeah. I feel like the bright side of Homestuck, don't get me wrong, the story is very well written, at least for the first half. Okay, hold on. Let me re reorganize my thoughts real quick. I, unironically, this is my favorite stream. I'm glad you liked it, Hinkaru. Thank you again for the soup. It means a lot. I put a lot of time into the stream, and I'm glad you guys enjoyed it enough to, you know, give a shit and be here and watch. And for those of you who were able, I mean... Yeah, soup helps. Now I can feed the Rosaders. No, I'm <laughs> Hell yeah, Lura. So let's talk about Homestuck as a whole real quick. Thank you again for the soup. Uh, thank you, Ayuyu. -Yu. Uh, Homestuck is a really, really, really good story about kids figuring out who they are, growing as people, starting out as very flawed, fallible characters that you kind of, you root for them to a degree, but they have a lot of problems that they need to grow out of, and that's good. And they eventually do confront those, and some of them grow up enough to be better people, some of them don't, and that's okay. That's life, that's reality. And I think it is insanely well written all the way up to chapter five, and I still think chapter six is good, it just missed some narrative beats it could have had. I do think it's worth a read, genuinely, but it has some problematic elements from the time it was written, and you kind of have to accept that for what it is, or download the fan collection, which as a replacer for some of the worst things it did and said. Ver but I think, personally, the things that were said and done in it are inherent to the character's growth as people, and I think it can be a little bit less impactful how they've changed as people to erase what they said when they were dumb 12 year olds hanging out on the internet saying stupid shit to each other. Anyway, Verda Green said, happy 15 years Homestuck. Been with the webcomics since the beginning, so it's crazy to see how much this silly series has impacted so many things. Also, shout out to my fellow Viva Void out there. Fuck yeah, Verda Green. I still love Homestuck. I think it's worth the read. I think it's worth your time. If you have the time to sit there and read like thousands of pages, please do. I don't think you'll regret it. It is by far the best isekai out there. One of the best coming of age stories, period. And the character writing is where it shines the most. The world building is great but it gets away from the world building after a while, which I am sad about, but will continue to espouse as incredible. But the character writing almost never falls off and has some of the most realized, well-written characters I've ever read, period. 
Imanahe says, I got Page of Light on the quiz and your explanation of lore really helped as someone who knew nothing about Homestuck. Fuck yeah, I hope it got you excited about the lore and the existence of the universe and made you want to world build within it, even if you haven't read the webcomic, because it's a lot of fun. Happy 14th, 13th, thanks Ruby. Hold on, I'm missing some, I'm missing some. I gotta go back up, I gotta go back up, I gotta go back up. Uh, Vizodi said, extremely well done presentation and lecture, a good for a fresher as a longtime Homestuck fan. Fuck yeah. Uh, fifth. Thank you for the delicious crimber chips. <laughs> Mm, mm. I'm gonna give some of those to the, to the Rusaders. Here you go. Ardenay says, this is peak Rouge Yep. See you for hours about a special interest. This was fun. Thanks for all the hard work. I might be convinced to actually fit. Please finish Homestuck. It didn't finish as strong as it could, but it did finish and it was genuinely a good ending. It's just some narrative arcs got left hanging and that made me sad. And I, okay, here's my one gripe with Homestuck I'll always have. And sorry for the spoilers. Vriska never should have come back. Her death was an incredible narrative beat and set, sealed her character perfectly in the arc it was supposed to have. And it being reversed was bad writing. Okay, sorry, that's all. Also, I don't like Vriska. <laughs> Uh, Mikuru-chan says, I loved this. It was so nostalgic. Would you ever try playing Homestuck in a stream at one point? I actually have already played Pester Quest, and I'm going to finish it. Don't worry. I might even put it on next week's schedule or the week after. Next week is going to be really big for you guys, and I think you're going to love it, so I don't want to necessarily cross-pollinate with Homestuck, but it might be the week right after. Cassandra says, that was a lot, but I think I understand it now. Maybe. <laughs> Thank you for the holy shit. Uh, not a homestuck crim zupa. And what were in the year of our Lord 2024? How is this the reality I exist in? A oh, homestuck crim zupa. <laughs> That's going down in Hollow Live history, baby. Let's go. God damn. I hope this ends up being like a fucking stream of all time. I hope people look at this like, how? How did he do that? Why? Why did people? People supported that. Um. Trekkie says depression will always be a part of me, but has not and will not always define me. Living with depression is still life with value I want to live. Exactly. Agreed. 100%. Great job owning that. Emily, nope. Emil said, great explanation, great setup. Thanks for the amazing info dump. Happy 413. <laughs> Thank you. Blue River Bane. Thanks for the support. Nim, 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 nim. Uh, Sulfurica said, we're all uh, roost stuck now. It just keeps happening. I warned you about stairs, bro. I, I told you. It keeps happening. Window Goblin said, I feel like I have to read Homestuck now since it's also your, my birthday. You do have to read Homestuck now. It's important. Seagal Vartan said, took the quiz on off while at work and a bit sleep deprived, but I got, ooh, page of life. What an incredible power. Holy fuck. Congrats. The Nomade said, I got pages. God, so many pages in here. You guys have not realized an ounce of your power, but when you do, when you do. Jetson said, are you part of the iconic Kickstarter of 2012? My gamer bro shirt still lives till this day. I did not support it. Unfortunately, I was broke at the time, but I, I do wish I had, honestly. Dumpling said, thank you for my life. Homestuck swag. Also, pachoo. I support them by buying their Bandcamp albums now because their music goes insanely hard. Uh, Nur said, I'm interested in Homestuck now and I hate you for that. Also, I'm the self. Oh, you repair? Rage? You help people get in touch with their... In That's a revolutionary if I've ever heard one. You're the person who starts revolutions. Fuck yeah, let's go, Nero. Huh. I'm missing some. Hold on. Emily said, also, I am pleased to report uh, via working in a school that middle schools are still getting an homestuck. Let's go! The circle of life continues! Rosary said, absolutely mind-blowing, literally, incredible workers. Thank you so much for ha and happy 413. You guys better keep telling me your fucking class facts while you're doing this. Ninapedia said, as someone who's never really engaged with homestuck because it was super intimidating, you made it super easy to understand. Silph of life, and I want to read homestuck now. Do it, Pandam! Quick, what's your favorite Homestuck song? Probably Savior of the Dreaming Dead or, or Savior of the Waking World or Sun Slammer. Uh, I also really like Cascade. Joke Electric says, I got page of time. I don't know what that means. Oh, it means that you're going to be the strongest time player ever one day. I missed a uh, 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 soup in the back. Hold on. Killog said, great job on the stream. Happy 413. Killogs, thank you so much for the Crim Zupa. You were absolutely fucking nuts. Um, just this once, I'll say, that's great. Uh, you are my worst enemy, but I... You know what? You're still at the top of A-list, if not my happy list. Uh, Dim Dawn said, got in Homestuck around two years ago because my closest friend group was in Homestuck, and I got curious, and much to my friends this May, I'm, it's now a huge part of my personality. <laughs> Miss Unstable, thanks for your first soup and saying, I knew nothing about Homestuck, but this was so interesting, and your passion was so infectious. Also, the amount of work you put in was insane. Write stuff. Ice Lena, I know you said you want to write stuff and I got your creative juices flowing. Fucking do it, please. Please write more Homestuck shit. Be my guest. It's beautiful. There's an incredible fan comic, comic going on right now that I haven't had a chance to sit down and read. I think it's called... <sighs> Null 
session or voids. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, check it out. It's really good. One of the most incredible Homestuck artists that was around in the heyday of Homestuck is working on it. It's so fucking good. Genuinely, please look at it. The art is incredible. I know the art of Homestuck can be a barrier to entry, but the fan base made some of the most nuts, beautiful, like awe-inspiring and like heart-wrenching fan works and fan songs and like music videos you've ever seen and just music in general fucking toby fox used to make homestuck music the guy who wrote undertale the guy who's worked on pokemon music he used to make undertale or er, homestuck music i mean the music's insane glad you like your kingdom you put so much work in this stream and it showed page of Li oh i read that one i read that one good 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 uh batman says someone who's obsessed with turning things into trolls i absolutely cannot wait to draw all your stars troll sonas do draw all the stars troll sonas please tag the other boys with their art tags as well i want them to be confused and annoyed <laughs> jess thank you for the get to crimber ships and teal cat one more Crim super on homestuck day won't hurt damn straight it won't let's go please use the hashtag hollow stuck by the way if you end up uh making any homestuck fan works for hollow live just so I can keep track of it as well. Um, Sylph of Hope says, Chrissy, let's fucking go. Flagrant Falcon said, if you told me 10 years ago that I'd watch an anime troll guy give an almost three hour presentation on Homestuck, I think you were smoking something. <laughs> well, here we are. You're welcome. You're welcome for making you consume things you didn't think you would. Co oh, it's Solix's theme. But I think it has copyrighted audio in it, so I got to skip it. God, Solix's theme goes so hard. It's called The Blind Prophet. Go listen to it. Anyway. Oh, here we go, baby. Megalovania, which was Vriska's theme before it was Sansa's theme. A Toby Fox original, baby. Megalovania goes hard. It technically was originally an Earthbound uh, fan game theme, but we'll ignore that. Page of Void. Nice, Rainy Shrimpy. Congratulations. Uh, after being uh, years of being a witch of something, I forgot. I redid the test, got Bard of Heart. Nice, Natzilla. Thank you for being uh, for engaging with the comments so genuinely and enthusiastically. It's healing, to be honest. I am tired of people pretending Homestuck is the worst thing that ever hit the internet. Homestuck is genuinely an incredibly good narrative and story, and it's worth your time. There's a lot of cringy things that happened to the fan base. There's some things that didn't age well in the comic. That's the truth. But Homestuck is the internet Bible for a reason. It is set. It broke incredible ground and set the stage for the internet for years to come. I'm not gonna, I'm tired of, I'm tired of pretending I don't want you to read it. Read Homestuck. I'm tired of pretending. I'm tired of acting like it's not worth your time. I'm tired of acting like it doesn't have some of the best character writing ever put to page. I'm tired of it. Yeah, it's got problems. It's fucking good. Solace Nor says, thanks a lot, Ruse. I'm back in Homestuck hell. Woo, let's go. Bar to mine, baby. Analytical J said, I got a miserable flash deck to a Homestuck presentation I did years ago. 10 out of 10 would cringe you get it. Prince of Rage. That's a calming influence. I see people being like, Toby Fox. Toby Fox. Yeah, Toby Fox. A lot of incredible people worked on the music of Homestuck. James Roach worked on the music of Homestuck. There's so many talented musicians who don't get enough credit for the amount of work they put into this shit. Just please go listen to Homestuck's. Like, if you don't have time to read the comic, look at the fan art and listen to the albums. Goddamn, they go hard. What else we got going on? Nixie says, Silver Space. How do we determine our blood and moon? Also, now you made me want to read it. Thank you for the info dump and all your hard work. Typically for Bloodcast, I just go with my Zodiac sign, but you could also determine it based on like how you fit into your own society since it's a caste system, but you'd have to understand troll society intimately to do that, so that's kind of hard. As far as moon, I genuinely... Uh, there's always an equal amount of players on each moon, and typically I go with the more mentally troubled or the ones who have more traumas go on Durst, and the more carefree ones go on Prospect, but that's not always true. There's a lot of mental troubles in everybody in the world, no matter how carefree they seem. It just seems like the people who present as more carefree tend to go to Prospect. What else do we got going on? Let's see. Oh, man, I'm falling behind. Okay, let's catch up. Uh, fuck me. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Sully said, I quit Homestuck within a few hundred pages as I was releasing years ago. Now I feel like I missed out. I got Page of Mind, Teal, Durst, Light. Let's fucking go, baby. Page of Mind. I love Mind. Great aspect. Hina said, thanks for the Hollow Star endorsed Homestuck A or Hollow Stuck AU. By the way, I'm a mage of mine, but a purple jester blood. <laughs> With what an insight this stream gave to my class spec. Incredible. Lean Tindo said, thank you so much for doing the comprehensive guide to Homestuck. Fans I know were either too used to jokes to try and explain to me or didn't want to try because it's too complicated. Love your genuineness with critical thinking and application. Fuck yeah. I will explain anything no matter how complicated because I love getting crunchy with it. Yvette uh, Thanatos says, my pal Krill, the bard of breath, says, Dave did not accidentally put himself in the Colonel Sprite. He went back in time and replaced his first choice. Lil Cal then ended in a Doom timeline universe. Okay, so I'm going to say it was an accident because Dave's a fucking idiot. I know he did it on purpose. It was a very dumb choice. 
Caster says, as someone who used to host meetups, this feels like a mass hallucination. Loved every second of it. So full of rage! Chocolate Naruto, thank you for your first ever soup. I am going to assume it's a delicious chocolate pudding pie, not soup. Uh, Kazzy says, I got night of space, and I don't know how I would have handled this class fit 10 years ago. Thanks for this refresher, Ruse. Fuck yeah. Slayer casted, I took the test and got page of space. Please help me level up. Can somebody power level uh, Slayer cast, please? Can somebody help me over here? Yeah, hang out with me, kid. I got you covered. We'll wield Doom for a while until you get up and running, and then you can carry me. Hagwitch said, looks like I'm a bard of space. I agreed to the pa uh, space part, but the bard? I think I did something wrong. Pouts. I'm a loner. That's okay. Bards aren't the social class anymore. They're the destruction passively class. That's not wrong. Or it might mean you need to grow into your class. It might mean that's where you need to go. Soso -so says, this was genuinely an amazing stream. How you explain topics, especially when it's something you're passionate about or have deep knowledge of, comes through screen so easily. I've tried my whole life to be a fucking over-explaining... Oh, oh no! Is that the... Is that man fucking explaining things? Pretty typical of me. But you know what? Sometimes you gotta play into your tropes. I, I'm a guy who likes explaining things. Ash says, I got bar to mind. As someone who hasn't engaged Homestuck basically at all, this stream made me really interested in checking it out. Please do. It's 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 hard to break through. Okay, so the early chapters of Homestuck are going to be a lot of coding humor and hyper meta jokes, and that's partially because Homestuck originally was a webcomic that was fan made. Hussey would let a forum say what happened next in a choose your own adventure type of poll and then they would make the panel and then do that again and again they quickly dropped that but it, it initially is a lot of like really meta textual humor it gets into the really good character writing a little further in so just give it like two or three chapters it's really not that long chapters five and six are the longest by far and that's where it gets really meaty four and five are the best chapters though so just make it till then also, I really love chapters two and three. And unpopular opinion, I think chapter one was also really good, and people try way too hard to skip it. I do think it's good. If you like metatextual sort of highbrow humor, it's a lot of fun. It also has a lot of lowbrow, like, dick jokes, but, you know. Mari said, alas, the night of rage. Thank you for cursing us with this legendary stream. You're welcome. Azura said, all this talk's making me remember my beloved OC, the Prince of Doom, I made a while ago, and I don't know if I should thank you or hate you. You can thank me. You just did thank me. You dropped soup right on my, on my head, and I'm saying... Mm, mm, that's tasty soup right there. Uh, the gnome silliest prophet said, when are we doing Homestuck read-along streams? Night of Heart, by the way. Read Homestuck years ago, and this stream activated those memories. Teal Bloods are always my favorite. It just makes sense. I agree. Teal Bloods are the best. Besides Carcat. Carcat stands out as a little freaky fucking mutant. I also really like Solix. I think he's a lot of fun. Though, on second read-through, I did get annoyed at how passive he is, but maybe that's the Doom aspect influencing him. He is very resigned to just being like, eh, I guess we're gonna die. Oh, well. He's not like a coward. He's heroic. He'll fight things when it's time and he kills himself to save everybody. But he does it in a very like, I'm accepting my fate type of way. Uh, Chocolate Naruto says, have you read Paradox Space webcomic? It's hilarious and cute and amazing. It's all nuts. I have not, but I want to read it. I want to read a couple of Homestuck fan comics. There's also this one that I don't remember the name of that had a really good dancing animation that I want to read. And I'm trying to catch up on Homestuck too when I have free time. Vamp Stay says, just finished taking the quiz and I got Muse of Life. I don't know what that means. It means you're the highest tier Muse player ever and that you embody life in its truest aspect. You would be like the control, like you are what life takes inspiration from. You are the inspiration for evolution and life and life in the universe. Congrats. Astra Amartya says, page of space here. It's insanely close to what I write for my OC. This is crazy. It's been over a decade since I last heard someone yap away about Homestuck like this. Snowfox said, can't wait to talk to my Homestuck friend who's never watched a VTuber about this stream for the rest of the day. <laughs> I got page of, you have so many. How are you guys all pages? You got to start realizing your own powers, you bastards. Serenatus, no, Serendras. Thanks for being a Rosader and welcome in. I see that PFP. I see you there. Is that Mina? I outed, my homestuck, uh, outed myself as a Homestuck fan of my best friend accidentally because I said shoosh pap. <laughs> shoosh pap. Thanks for this. Very nostalgic. Fellow Knight of Doom. Let's go, Wawa. Depression all around, baby. Silent Eric said, shouldn't the stream have the title S in the title? Thanks for this. Oh, it should have. You're right. This is so fun. Honestly, with how much time Homestuck stuck around in my life when I was younger, being reintroduced to this sto uh, crazy story is really fe feeding that finish Homestuck final itch. Silk of Heart, rise up, says the keychain. Do it, keychain. Finish Homestuck. Do it. Do it now. Fuck, I am behind. All right, I'm almost there. It watch says, my small brain kept up. Hell yeah! Uh, Slim Jim 8345 said, I took the test and got Rogue of Wind. Ooh, Rogue of Breath is a really cool one. That means you can literally steal the breath from others and give it to your allies, or you can steal freedom and deliver it. That's really cool. 
Yo, the fan made Homestuck animations. Oh, if I could, I, I, I would show you Cascade on stream right now, but it's such a huge spoiler, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, but I agree, Elusiel. Lavender Lullaby said, previously in uh, intimidated by the lore of Homestuck, and I'm so happy you facilitated my renewed obsession. Thank you for that, truly. F Prospect Knight of Hope. You're like my antithesis. That's beautiful. We should be rivals. We should fight each other to the death on top of a snow-covered hill after we've been best friends for years, but now because of our differing goals, we have to stop each other. Maybe I'm going out uh, to stop all the other timelines and kill all of our besties while you're trying to stop me because you still believe they're people who are worthy of life, but I'm trying to preserve the alpha timeline, so neither of us is right or wrong. It's just idealism versus fatalism. And then we have a like, duel to the death and one of us dies, sadly, to piano music. Wouldn't that be cool? Also, this song is Gold Pilot. It's incredible. It's also one of my favorite Homestuck songs. It's for Solix's ancestor. Death Sons Lee says, Two months here. Thank, for, thank you for fully dragging me back to the hell as the Mage of Space. <laughs> yes, I still remember how the type styles work. Oh my god, what a fucking sick typing quirk. That's genius. I never even thought about making H's like that. Noodle Brand said, Read almost all of it a decade ago. Great refresher stream. Page of Heart. Fuck yeah. I'm glad we're just giving each other our fucking class specs. I'm kind of loving this actually. Uh, Pogger in real said, one of the most fun ways to assign players to Prospect is to go with whichever one makes them less comfortable. True, actually. Maybe I'd be Prospect in that way. I do like being in the dark. I, I spend most of my days at night. So, or uh, most of my waking hours in the night. Uh, Daydream said, took the test and got Rogue of Time. Oh, so fucking cool. Shy Panda said, I got Knight of Life on the quiz. And it makes some sense. I'm gonna go get my friends to do at least a quiz and see what they get. A Knight of Life wielding life as a weapon and or protecting life is both insanely cool and very druid core. Pandam said, holy shit, I just realized I liked the Dirt Streamers song years ago, and now where it came from. Keelilix said, I used to be the maid of mine, now I'm the rogue of art. Also, I have the mind blanket, and I use it every day. God damn it, I gotta get some Doom merch. I had a Doom shirt for a while, but that dark, dark black on that very, very dark, dark green is hard to see. <laughs> Vavik just said, I am unironically considering writing my college thesis on this webcomic. It's great. Even when Toby Fox writes completely normal rock operas about it. <laughs> Damn straight it is. Nixon said, what color blood is Capricorn? Capricorn was the Juggalos, the purple bloods, uh, the clowns. Uh, b blank blood and silver space from Durst. Must find my Homestuck twin now. Ray said, did the funny quiz, got silver breast. So that's cool, I guess. Knows nothing of Homestick. It means you repair freedom. You, you restore freedom to those who have lost it, or you repair the the wind, the breath itself. You paint with all the motherfucking colors of the wind. Congratulations. You were able to repair the the the, the sense of wind to things. Tachibana Chie says, this brought back so many fantastic memories. Thanks for the stream, Silk of Heart. Nice. Crow of Judgment. Page of mind, baby. Still not sure what it means, but I want to read Homestuck. It means you are very, very dumb, but if you get to your main, truest, most powerful form, you will be the smartest motherfucker around, and you're going to be playing, uh, like, 5D chess all day. Shin says, Sylph of Light. Oops. You repair luck and or light and or truth? Sarah Spunda, thanks for this special program. No fucking problem, gamer. My pleasure. For once, I had a great time being here. Listen. You guys are despicable, and I despise you. But it's nice to have people around as a punching bag once in a while to make fun of. No, Lito said, finally, after all these years, I finally learned what Homestuck is. Thank you, and I'm the page of breath. God, so many pages. It's wild. You guys are going to be so busted. But God, towing around this many fucking useless pages in the early levels is going to be so terrible. Tech turncoat. <gasps> tech turncoat, you say? A turn tech, if you would? I took the test forever ago and got major heart, but I took the test just now and got page hope. Thanks for the Homestuck push. No problem. Astral Shower says, God damn it. Thanks for waking up my lawn dormant hyperfixation on class, er, class specs. Turns out I'm the simple life after all, after testing. After all these years. Hell yeah. Reese, Reese Pieces says, just redid my class specs after years. And apparently I'm now a, ooh, made of light. That means, A, one, you are literally made of light. Like you are made of the aspect of light. You are luck in its truest form. Very cool. Very fun. Two... You don't inherit it like an heir, but you are made of it. Two, you maintain light and luck in all of its aspects, as well as truth. Just previously, I was a blood player. Also, first time I read Homestuck, I skipped the troll dialogue because I had trouble reading their quirks. Please read it. It's genuinely very well written. Lynn Alexis says, I did it twice and got music space. Also, thanks for explaining Homestuck. I read it a long time ago, but I didn't process it as well as I did today. Fuck yeah. Am I caught up? Nope. God damn it. I thought I caught up. I'm an idiot. Holy shit. How behind am I? Wait a minute. I got to scroll up till I find where I was. Oh. Uh, 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 
Okay, okay. LC Turk says, I got made delight. I don't know what it means, but I really enjoyed the stream. Thanks for the fun stream. Cam uh, Chameleon says, this is a joy to listen to on a long drive to work. Thank you. I never got into it, but now I'm curious. Also, as a page of space, I like everyone here. Uh, Vivid Zephyr says, as a kid, I got music breath in the quiz, but a um, silk of mind in the quiz now, and that's fascinating to think about now that I'm older. It's because you're different. You're not who you were then. You've got different hang-ups and different quests and different like things you need to change about yourself or that embody yourself. Uh, Kira says, I didn't get paid. I got night of light. Sam Nealon says, thanks for the trip down memory lane. Feels like ages ago when I write, wrote Iron Infidel and ended up meeting some of my... You wrote Iron Infidel? You're fucking nuts. I, can we listen to Iron Infidel real quick? Because that's also one of my favorites. Go, uh, don't get me wrong. Gold Pilot goes hard, but Iron Infidel? Listen to this shit. Let me... All right, hold on. I got to catch... Sam, remind me. I'm going to listen to Iron Infidel before I'm done here, but I got to catch up or I'm going to always be behind. A brick wall says, got here late, so I have to watch VOD. Thanks for refreshing my memory. When's the Problem Sleuth stream? Uh, I never read Problem Sleuth, but reading it on stream would be fun, actually. Scylla Real says, I had a forum suggestion chosen by Hussey in the first... God, holy shit, that's so cool to be a part of that. That's so fun. Damn. I wish I was a part of Homestuck. I really was a recluse from the fan base and kind of stayed away from it. I made some lifelong acquaintances through Homestuck, but I did not really get invested in the fan base or go to cons during its hype. Um, I stayed at home and theory crafted on my own. Uh, Louis Vampiric says, two months. Yay! I never really got into Homestuck, so I think it might be my time to start reading. Do it. Just one more child said, thank you for the reintroduction to Homestuck. It's been so long. Mage of Light. Ooh, Mage of Light. Nice. Volavolt says, apparently I'm the rogue of hope. Fuck, that's awesome. God, there's so many cool ideas for... It immediately sparks my, like, fucking world-building brain and makes me want to, like, work on that class back and how it would fit into the universe and what it would mean for a character's arc. Eldritch Penguin says, I got Gnome stuck in Hollow around the same time, even before the Ian branch existed, so seeing this crossover is still wild to me. Thanks for the stream. Signed, A Thief of Mind. Honestly, you guys want to hear some deep lore? Some deep, deep lore? Homestuck is 50% of the reason I got into world-building and TTRPG game design. The other percentile is D&D, &D, but originally the reason I looked into TTRPG game design is because I wanted to find a way to make S uh, Esperb a TTRPG. I was thinking about ways I could mechanically implement things like that, and planets, and class specs, and sprites, and quest beds, and balancing that kind of shit, and adding more monster variety, and how to work alchemy into the game in a way that makes sense, but I did give that up. Uh, but it is 50% of the reason I exist as a world builder today. Sater says, I've been tact uh, tactically avoiding Homestuck for years, but now it looks like it finally caught up with me. Silph of Breath, baby! Let's go! Quark came out as Bard of Breath. I may understand this one day. One day you will, don't you worry. Neroa says, holy crap, amount of effort put into the stream. Sped through quiz to get Rogue Avoid. Seems like a lot. Oh, that's a lot of work, but very cool, actually. Rogue Avoid exists in the narrative and is a super fucking cool character. Uh, might retake later, however. Uh... I do have a lot of shirts in that color. Let's go! Wait, I missed a few. It skipped me, it skipped me through some. Hold on. Aplo says, took a new one. Both night of space. Loving the resurgence of Homestuck. Wish I still had the merch, just the hoodies, etc. Please love Homestuck. It's time for it to have a renaissance. I'm tired of people pretending it's cringe. I know that was in vogue, and I know it was funny to all say we hate Homestuck. And there are things that you should hate about Homestuck, but there is way more to love about it. Fifth says, got page of breath. Honestly, knew nothing about Homestuck other than the name. After the stream, I'll definitely check it out. Your enthusiasm got me interested. Let's go! What is a page of life? A page of life is somebody who starts out really disconnected from life and very weak, but if given the right time, care, and effort, is going to have a very long, difficult journey, but will become the most powerful life player that exists. Uh, besides lords and muses, of course. Uh, meaning that you will embody life uh, and be able to use it at your whim, essentially. Aura Angelique says, I don't know how I got this, but I took the quiz and got Muse of Space, which is insane because Calliope is my favorite character. Damn, that's busted. Sarah says, I've had Homestuck blacklisted and Tumblr since 2010. I now regret it. I wish I'd gotten into it. Now I have to read it. Thanks. Took the test. I'm Sylph of Light. Well, blacklisting Homestuck on Tumblr is sometimes the right move. There was a lot of not safe for work art of Homestuck. Um, so blacklisting, that's not always a bad idea. But there's also a lot of really incredible, like, gut-wrenching, super great art of Homestuck. Not that not safe for work art can't be your, like, cool or whatever if it's, like, you know, adults, consenting characters or whatever. Um, but th there's a lot of fetish art that went into that. Any s sufficiently large fandom is going to have a lot of fetish art that you probably don't want to see. Anyway, be careful what you don't... Be careful what you look for. Be careful what you're looking for. Be very careful about consuming Homestuck art. Uh, there's tons and tons more really, 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 really rad art. And again, some not safe work art, super great or whatever. I'm not saying that doesn't make you an artist. I'm just saying be careful about what you find. Lizion says, made a heart here. Thanks for the stream, Bruce. And thanks for forcefully injecting Homestuck into Hollow Stars. No problem. Sarandra says, my profile picture is Trees of Tethys from... <sighs> Oh, I didn't finish the Hive Swap games. I need to play through them. I played Pester Quest, Friend Sim, and, um... 
That's it. I need to pay, play Hive Swap, actually. Wanted to know if you do them or know, knew about the Genesis Project on Steam. I have played Genesis Project. I hope they keep working on it. I'm super excited to play more of it. Um, very janky, very fun. I will consider Hive Swap. We'll see. Uh, Mayonnaise said, I got Page Heart. Didn't understand what the pages do, but it sounds cool. Fuck yeah, baby. Night of Life, protecting life. How painfully heroic, says Phil Weasel. This stream was such a massive flashback to the past. I love revisiting those memories. Fuck yeah, baby. Bon, uh, Ron says, happy 413 Roos. Congrats on being a... I'm a hope player now? Am I? Damn. Maybe the prince of hope. No, just <laughs> Twig says, bar to heart. I don't know what it means, but I enjoy learning about Homestuck. Fuck yeah! Oh, it skipped down again. Damn it, it keeps doing this where when I scroll down, it skips a bunch of shit. Hold on. Jade Wolf. I never knew about Homestuck, but took the quiz after my sister yelling at me for her getting Knight of Light. So I got Mage of Light. Is that good? It means you're duo light players, which is actually a really cool concept. I never even thought about multiple aspects on the same thing. Mage and Knight of Light sounds like a classic D&D party. That sounds like a lot of fun, actually. Uh, Bunny Hugger says, with the help of the quiz, you link, I finally narrowed it down to an already growing Page of Heart or a new Page of Hope. Let's go. Trekkie says, Revenant World is a TTRPG based on Homest. Is it? Interesting. Tag me in that and ho Hollowstuck. I want to look at that later. Hashtag Hollowstuck and say that on Twitter for me so I remember to look at that. Hollowstuck AU goes hard. Thanks for the stream. Hell yeah, Breen. Aura says, I got Page of Void. I don't know much about Homestuck, but it seems really cool. It is. Lazy, Lazy Daze or Lazy Day, Lazy Days. I'm a fucking idiot. Lazy Days says, hey, Ruse, do you know about the online Homestuck Con? Pretty fun event. Never heard of it, actually, but that sounds interesting. Aosh, Aoshota Pup says, uh, never thought I'd get into Homestuck, and here I am. Really enjoy the stream. I got Page of Mind. Hell yeah, baby. Page of Mind. Noelita said, quick question. What is the Page of Breath? So the Page of Breath is a class known as Page, which is, at the start, the weakest class, but eventually evolves into the strongest class through very difficult trial and error and questing. They are... Breath, meaning that's their aspect, which is the aspect associated with freedom and wind. So you would have control over wind and all things associated with wind, as well as things associated with freedom and freedom of movement and freedom of self. Kamala, Kamala T said, you explaining this is connected dots from when I first read it, and now going from Silver Light to Made of Time is fascinating. Fuck yeah. Oh, I'm so close now. I'm almost caught up. The Teep says, I have so many tabs open now. Thanks, Ruse. Off down the rabbit hole. Wish me luck. See you on the other side. Thanks for your first delicious soup and good luck on your rabbit hole. Briar says, I got Witch Heart. What does that mean for me? It means you're somebody who is able to create and or manipulate heart. Heart being the soul and fractured cells. You might be the type of person who can project yourself out into space and manipulate things from a vast distance using astral projection. You might be somebody who's able to fracture somebody else into multiple pieces of themselves. You might be somebody who's able to repair those multiple pieces. You might be somebody who's able to create literal soul clones of yourself to help in combat. It really depends on how you interpret it. Quiz result, page of life. Let's go, Ninapedia. Um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, can I catch up? Uh, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Let me catch up, and then I'm going to put on Iron Infidel. Uh, one second. Bum, bum, bum. Enticing Thor says, literally just sending this to make you keep reading it. You son of a bitch! Muse of Heart, is that good? It, well, it's the strongest class next to Lord, so yes. Um, you're the strongest heart player that ever lived besides Lord. Cenalox, three months, thank you, says, well, I didn't think I'd be celebrating Homestuck again, but here we are. Thanks for the streamers. I just want to reread it. Plus, I got Page of Life. I think I'm going to do my next reread very soon as well, so I'm with you. Uh, Raceley says, I was Page of Hope in high school. After a long journey, I've come to realize that class. It's really amazing seeing how that class has fit my journey so well. Thanks for giving us a place to connect to Homestuck again. Fuck yeah. Bean says, I got rogue of breath. Not sure what it means, but I tend to get air-related results on quizzes, so I guess that tracks. Oh, I caught up. All right, let's listen to Iron Infidel. This song goes so fucking hard. I can't believe you wrote this fucking song. You did say Infidel, right? Or was it, it's not night. You did Infidel, right? Iron Knight also goes incredibly hard, but let's look for Infidel first. Oh, wait, where is it? Uh-oh, I see Indigo Air, I see Iron Knight. Sylph of Mind? Hell yeah, Epi. Where the fuck did it go? Wait a minute. Let me use my little search function. I'll, I'll find it. I did the choir piece. Nuts. Oops. Uh, 
Air breath for years here. So nice to hear someone else go off about all the good things about Esper. Please keep hyperfixating. Oh, I intend to. Huh? What the hell? What? It's not even in this list. Uh, you know what? I'll go to bed camp and grab it. Don't you worry. I still got it under control. Uh, Okay, cool. So let me real quick go to... Fuck it, I'll go get my music. I don't care. I'll, I'll do it myself. Fuck it, I'll do it myself. Ah! Don't you do that. Ah, here we go, gamers. Ready? Listen to this shit. This is about Troll Jesus and or uh, the sufferer who ended up being tortured to death for the sin of believing that trolls could get along and have a better society. Uh, Servant AQ says, The Sylph of Space. Same souls I always got many years ago. I always wanted to be a Doom or Void player, but I guess you can't fight destiny. Yeah. Sometimes. This is going down as the stream. I Holy shit. I can't believe how... Oh, that's a lot of soup, actually, for one stream. That's nutty. I'm... Do I'm, I'm, you know what? That's insane. I'm going to tell people this is one of my biggest streams ever, and they're going to have to fucking deal with that. And it just keeps getting bigger the longer we're here talking about this shit. That's fucking nuts. Anyway, listen to this. Oh, shh. Is that not so good? You can just see it. You can see yourself on Alternia in the past, in the ancient era. They sing their mournful dirge for the one of them who believed in a better future. Someone here did this, by the way. This whole choir part. Is that not nuts? A Rosader did that. You Rosaders are fucking insanely talented. Holy shit. And like, ah, God, this, 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 the OST for this comic can have such beauty, right? Like, that's the sufferer. But let's listen to his ancestor, Carcat, you know, the main troll. Let's listen to his little theme. Ready? Because he sees himself as like a badass warrior knight, right? Like, he thinks he's some like insane fighter. That was about the sufferer. Let's listen to this one. Ready? Wish of space, muse of space. You got stronger, Hajime. That's what happened. Listen to this shit. I'm going to turn it up a little. Rogue of light. Fuck yeah, Pharaoh Layla. Turn it up a little more, maybe? Maybe? Beautiful. Yeah! Anyway, it goes hard. <laughs> Damn, it's good. Listen to Homestuck's music. Please listen to Homestuck's music. 
Sam Nealon, did I hear that you did Moonsetter as well? Because Moonsetter is another really good one, right up there with fucking Sun Slammer. God, so good. Blaze says, a presentation by my best friend on her presentation is what got me into my favorite piece of media today, so I really enjoyed the stream. Muse of Light. Damn, I've never seen a Muse of Light. That's wild. A bit lost on what it means. So Muse is the most powerful of the passive classes, meaning the classes that let their aspect affect them more than they affect their aspect. And Light has to do with truth and or luck. It can also have to do with actual light. Blue, thank you for the gifted memberships! Let's go! Miss Unstable, she deserves all the soup. Thank you. Rogue of Heart, fuck yeah! Volavolt says, congrats on the amazing successful stream. Thank you for being here. Thanks for making it a success. I was scared that I was going to have like two people watching this and cringing out of their skin, but you know what? Mama didn't raise no and I do what I want. Do the things you're afraid of. Air of light. It means you inherit the light, baby. Blue River Bane says, finally finished quiz. Quiz? Quiz? quiz. I used to be the thief of doom. Now I'm the sylph of mind. Obligatory Libra aspect. Volteca says, I've literally never consumed any Homestuck, but I took the quiz and I got page of space. That is neat. This song goes so fucking hard. All right, I'm going to grab Moon Center, and then I'm going to call it on Homestuck Music, and we're just going to play ourselves out. How's that sound? We're going to go find somebody to raid here in just a little bit. I do want to say that next uh, week is going to be a really big week for you guys. I'm super excited for that. This week has been Homestuck Week, and it's been a lot of fun. I'm so glad I got to go back and re-explore this and kind of explain what's going on with the world setting so it's less confusing, and you can consume some of the best parts of Homestuck. The world building, the like alien species writing, which, again, side note, Unironically, some of the best, like, fantasy creature writing that's ever existed. Like, the fact that they have different romance romance structures, like, rituals for how their society works, different values about, like, what is moral and what is amoral. Just nuts to come out of a webcomic. Lavender Jean says, Homestuck will forever be a part of Hollow Stars now, and I hate that fact. You're welcome. It is very layered. That's all right, Cat of Phoenix. The VOD will probably be up if I don't get copyright struck. <laughs> Theoretically, I have permission to listen to Homestuck music, though, so we should be good for this stream at least. I used to be Mage of Doom slash Space. It was a tie with the quiz I took back then. Now I'm the Muse of Space. Now that's character development. That's a power hike. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Ah, oh, Moonsetter, beautiful, beautiful. <sighs> Moonsetter goes so hard. It's so good. It's so good. There's so many varieties of music in the OST. God damn it! Listen to Air of Grief. Air of Grief is very good. Vivid Zephyr. I agree. Let's listen how charming this is. Listen. Ah, uh, gah. It gives me- how- how can a song give cute aggression? But it does! It makes me want to have tea! I want to sit down and have tea! With a cat! I want to sit down with my cats and have tea! Page of Life? Nice, Gabby Abby Dabby! Page of Doom? Ooh, Hanasaki, that's scary. Never heard of a Page of Doom. You should be worried. Every Doom player should be worried. <laughs> Doom is a very tough aspect to navigate. Oh, I know what I'm going to play. Oh, I know what I'm going to do to play us out, too. I'm such a genius. I'm such a genius. I know what I'm doing. Special Tomato says, I used to be the Witch of Doom back in the day, but now I'm apparently the Sylph of Space! Fuck yeah! Seer of Time? Oh, that's a cool one. Sylph of Space, is that good? Yeah, it means you literally repair space. It means that if there are fractures in all of space, you could repair it. And that does happen in the comic. There is a character who goes around and rips space. Not like rips things out of space, like destroys planets, like rips the concept of space apart and creates a break in the fourth wall. But the Sylph of Space could theoretically be the one to fix that. Amongst other things, obviously.
Anthem for, uh, from Symphony Impossible to play to close out. Well, I played Anthem to start out. I think I'm going to play one of my favorites to close out. I have a lot of favorite Homestuck music, but I do have a favorite, and I want to play that on the way out. So thanks for coming to the Homestuck stream, gamers. I'm going to hang out for just a second longer. I'm rating into Rio Senpai. Please stick around and hang out. Uh, Rio Senpai is an incredible content creator. Very fun. One of my JP Senpais. I believe he's playing Animal Crossing currently. If you enjoyed this stream, thank you very much. Don't forget to use hashtag Holostuck. I'm going to drop that in chat real fast so that you remember what it is. Uh, if you want to create fan works with it, uh, remember to tag the boys in their own fan works as well. Thank you for the soup. It means the world genuinely. It is time for me to get the fuck out of here. I'm going to send you away with this song. It's probably my favorite Homestuck song. Uh, it's very close, though. I really love Cascade and Sun Slammer and Moonsetter. But anyway, this one, I, it just holds a special place in my heart. Chocolate Naruto says, I, as a mad lad who is deep in the sauce of class spectating, this class spectating, made not one, but two fan sessions of dual class spected peeps. That's nuts, and congrats, you were wild. <laughs> oh, this drop. Ah! Huntress Diana says, happy 413. Thanks forever for the stream. The music is amazing. Thank you, Huntress Diana. Uh, Poppin' Theater, thank you for the insane Crim Zupa. Holy shit. All right, that's enough Crim Zupas, but thank you very much. Chance said, got page life. I'm so sorry I'm contributing all the pages in this book. That's all right. We love giant books because we like book club. Let's go, baby. Me, you said, another Silva space. Thanks for the stream, Ruse. It's been a lot of fun watching you and the Rosaders get so excited about something you really love. I'm thoroughly convinced to get into it. Yes! Yes! I'm doing it! God, this song! What if I cried? Yeah, what if I did? What if I did cry? The fucking title of this song is Savior of the Waking World. Does that not go insane? The counterpart to this song is the song Savior of the Dreaming Dead. God damn! Homestuck had sick titles. Thank you, Miu, for the delicious chips! Thanks for all the support, gamers. It means the world. It really, like, I don't... <laughs> not to be sappy or nice I hate being nice, you know that, but I don't know It 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 helps or it, it is mm, It is validating to put in a bunch of effort And uh, see that people like it and care And are excited about the content More than anything, thank you for being here I, I know, like, it, like, you know Throwing soups and chips and stuff, that is a privilege That is not a right, not everybody can do that So just being here and hanging out and chatting Is more than enough, thank you for doing that To you, those of you who do do that yeah, it's great. It's very helpful, especially around <laughs> uh, this time. So thanks that that you're too you're nicer than I deserve because I'm a real piece of shit. Air of mind. Do I just hear all the things? That's a secret. That's a secret for another day. Thanks for the soup, gamers. And that is the final soup. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs>